Here at Intoxia Reviews, we intellectually dissect the art of cinema, scene by scene. Here's some clips. Oh, he is. It's just a fucking big wooden doll full of cum chasing kids around. <laughs> you look up guys who poop in a bag. I think that's sense. where you'll find them. Because he is hurt. It's probably just in your search history anyway, isn't it? A movie which, by the way, reviewed by my mother, the review was, Thank God you were on early because we couldn't watch any more of that thing. <laughs> A wide berth. <laughs> well, this is a good scene. The uh, we're watching the infamous dildo scene. You got trolled. You were in. I shut you the were fuck in. up. No, I didn't say shit. You got trolled. Corey West just trolled, like trolled you. Real script. Yeah. They didn't even give him a script when he got the job. They gave him a bottle of Stoli and said, <laughs> "Learn this." Did you stumble on the joke? Talk about this movie for fart's sake. This is a we we can we can swear this movie fucking blows. So don't forget to subscribe to Intoxicated Reviews on all places you find podcasts. Except Spotify. We're working on it. Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. Welcome back to the Intoxicated Podcast. This is your drinking, comedy, variety talk show where I normally have my friends on and we talk about life. And I'm your host, Sarah. This week, I'm so excited to have a returning guest on the podcast. He's a good friend of mine, someone who has helped me a lot with the podcast, both in terms of giving me feedback about the show and just being an amazing guest. I have Vern on this week. Now, I know a lot of people are doing Sober October, which seems to be a bigger thing this year than in previous years. It feels like this year, a lot of people are doing it, and I'm hearing about it constantly. So even though this wasn't really planned to be based around Sober October, we have a Sober episode for you guys this week. But it's a very interesting episode. So this episode is about where Vern is at right now in his life. He has chosen to totally quit social media and alcohol. So he was not drinking for this episode. I was, I think I had just like one drink during this episode. It felt actually really good. I know that sounds weird coming from the host of a drunk podcast, but I really am enjoying kind of just taking it easy and not going too crazy on the booze lately. So the main subject of this episode is actually about social media and the fact that Vern cut it all out of his life. He is totally social media free. He deleted all his accounts. He stopped drinking. And that's what we talk about on this episode. We get into it. We get into the whole idea of making that lifestyle change, the whys and the hows. It's super fascinating to me as someone who is addicted to social media and drinks a lot, how someone does that, especially the social media thing, because that's something that is so ingrained in my behavior that I can't imagine I'd have an easy time quitting that. But it's an interesting idea, the idea of disconnecting to learn to connect better. And that's a really good takeaway from this episode, the idea of just lessening the noise in your life so that you can focus in on things that really matter and relationships that matter and real life experiences and conversations. I don't know about you guys, but I find that even when I go out and socialize with my friends, we're all on our phones and I'm very guilty of it. I'm very attached to social media. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with the whole thing. But as time goes on, I'm really starting to realize the importance of disconnecting and focusing on those real life moments instead of being glued to your screen. So this is a long episode, but it is a very good one. It's very insightful and it was a great conversation to have. It's actually a really good follow up to the episode I did with Mark about millennial life. That would have been episode 73. So a few episodes back, we talked about millennial life and the idea of social media, but this episode really hones in on specifically social media and the impact it has on us and how we put ourselves out there uh, to the world via social media and how we start to 
see ourselves um, through that medium. So super fascinating. And there's a bonus episode with Vern. I actually took out a good chunk of this recording, about a half hour of our conversation to post on Patreon as a bonus episode. We go on a little tangent. We talk about Big Brother UK, which is on my TV right now. We talk a little more about YouTube and anal sex. So yeah, that's going to be a good one for you guys to check out. Vern is amazing. He is a second time returning guest audio wise, but has been on the 12 hour live stream. And we did a Facebook live together as well from his apartment. So he's part of the intoxicated team at this point. He is a regular. He is also a Patreon. He gives me good feedback on the show. And I am so thankful just in general for his friendship, even outside of the podcast. Very grateful to have met him and so excited to be bringing you guys another episode with Vern and he will be back people some news on the Patreon front just wanted to let everybody know that there is a new audio diary app I did another episode so going forward these audio diaries are going to be available at the $3 level on Patreon I am just going to kind of do them whenever I can and post them for $3 and up the first one I did obviously was free it is available on the website and on Patreon you can listen to it on either one of those websites and speaking of that I have received so such positive feedback about that first audio diary that it just absolutely warms my heart. And I do want to give a Patreon shout out to a new Patreon. We have a new Patreon coming in at the $10 level. So I want to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to Catherine, who is a friend of mine who we recently reconnected. Actually, she gave me a lot of really positive feedback on the show. Let me know that she was listening and that she really connected to it and loved it and specifically reached out to me recently about the audio diary and gave me a very lovely message talking about how thankful she was that I posted it and that it helped her feel more strong and how she thinks it's important to talk about stuff like this even if it is a little bit uncomfortable so just thank you so much Catherine I'm so happy you're now on Patreon you're part of the community and you're going to be getting some awesome bonus episodes going forward so certainly if you are somebody who is interested in Patreon check out the levels you can donate anywhere from one dollar to twenty and I mean as you can see I'm starting to give bonus episodes to various levels so I definitely do a lot of five dollar bonus episodes the ten dollar ones are kind of more ones that we plan for more you know me and Corey might set aside a day to do a ten dollar bonus episode the five dollar episodes include footage from previously recorded episodes and tinder takeovers stuff like that so also really good and then the three dollar ones will be the audio diaries so there's a chance for whatever your budget is uh, for you to get some bonus content content up on patreon so definitely check it out that is patreon.com backslash intoxicated so in the second audio diary i do talk about a situation that i had last week involving my tilted uterus which is just riveting um (laughs) and also my thoughts and reactions to the new shane dawson youtube series about jake paul it's not totally over yet but i do give some thoughts and opinions on that and do hit the subscribe button on whatever podcast app you use for podcasts make sure you don't miss any episodes of Intoxicated. Certainly leave a rating or review on iTunes if you like as well. That would really help us out. And follow us on social media. That's Facebook and Instagram, Intoxicated Podcast, on Twitter at in underscore intoxicated. You can also shoot us an email with any questions, feedback, comments to intoxicatedpodcast at gmail.com. And that's about it, guys. Tried to do a short intro this time. It never happens. This is a longer episode. Like I say all the time, grab a snack, grab a drink, and enjoy this very awesome episode with Vern. Tits and cocks and fucking shit and dick. Hello, everybody. <laughs> You're freaking me out. <laughs> I get that a lot. Welcome back to the Intoxicated Podcast, everyone. Hi. Oh my gosh, we're here with a second time kind of third time kind of third yeah almost fourth actually if you count the very first time with the double episode Mm -hmm. and then you count the live stream for 12 Mm -hmm. hours i was there for what a couple hours of that Mm -hmm. and then you live stream from my kitchen that's true to facebook and now i'm back here i'm on mic i'm like this is your second audio only episode that's right yeah that's right yeah so Vern, that's me Vern is back and i'm so happy to be back i love the show i'm actually a fan so i mean Mm -hmm. this is extra special to me Vern. i can always rely on you to give me like feedback on the episodes because not everyone gives me feedback yeah and you will yeah which i fucking love (laughs) 
Well, I'm also <laughs> nervous of ever disappointing you. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, like, I don't want to do something and then have you be like, Sarah, what the fuck was that? No. I, I mean, like, I do have a tendency to tell people exactly what I'm thinking. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I have, I do hear, tell me what you really think. Like yeah. quite a bit, and uh, but no, I did that. Oh, you're being sarcastic, right? Because I was too direct, and yeah, yeah, okay. So <laughs> I get it. that note from a lot of people. That's um, so funny. But yeah, no, I mean, if you ever want to know or whatever, <sighs> I'm happy to give feedback. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yes, you and do. I listen to you. So I listen to Joe Rogan, and I listen to you. Is is Joe Rogan the closest one? Okay, like because I remember you telling me that you listen to other shows, and they were like very different from Intoxicated. So like, is Joe Rogan the closest one? To the vein of intoxicated that you listen to, I want to say or it's you, very similar, and I'll yeah. I'll give you a few reasons why Ooh. it's similar because it's uh, an unconstrained by time, mostly mm-hmm. long form conversation between two or more people. Yep, um, and it's a very relaxed and casual environment. Check check, and and the conversation is allowed to meander just about wherever it wants to, which was really fun, and uh, and the host has a lot of. You know, personality and Yay! contributes a lot to it as well. So I'll take that being compared to him. Fuck. Yeah, Joe I mean, he's the man. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. God damn. Well, thanks so much for being here. <laughs> we have a lot to fucking talk about. We do. We've so much hung has out. Happened. So much has happened. So when did we record? When would that have been? That was in the summer. It was in July. July. Early July. Yeah. So July we recorded your episode. Yeah. I had only met you. That. Like within the two weeks of that episode, yeah. like we met once, we recorded together. Yeah, instant friends. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was amazing. Like it was because I have such an affinity for this medium. It was like I was in. It was a dream come true, Aww. actually. And then and then it's continued to be like I've been invited and I've been included, so I love it. Yeah, you're part of the team now. Yeah, yeah. You're not just a guest. You're part of the team. Team Sarah, team intoxicated. Team intoxicated. Yep. Intoxicated street team slash production team slash guest <laughs> slash probably. <laughs> at, at this point, I feel like you, Shannon, and Harper is just going to be like, you guys are like essentially guest hosts. Yeah, I definitely feel akin with Harper as well because I just listened to the 36 times mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. episode you girls are hilarious really Kristen it. Lily goes awesome oh it, yeah it's so They're good hilarious. um and then while you guys were live streaming I think on Instagram Harper t- like tuned in and you're like oh hi Harper yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you've definitely done that to me too and I'm like Harper and I are like equally fans of the show I love it when Harper tunes in I, yeah. I also just instantly like I, I flip a switch and I'm like Harper's watching. <laughs> Be fierce, Sarah. Find your light. Find your Be, light. Yeah. You need to amp it up for Harper. So Harper, if you're listening, you got yes. fans here. Yeah, I'm a super fan of Harper She as well. will be back for sure. That's great. I, I would love, to I'm not going to have her back on for just another regular episode. Yeah. But is. I feel like even with her, like the live stream element of it yeah. is so much fun with her. Yeah. Because she interacts with people and it's Absolutely. fucking great. She's super larger than life. like Larger than life. Yeah. And what's interesting is like w- w- there are a lot of ways in which she and I are really different, but I really appreciate her and, and all she stands for. But yeah. like one of the main reasons that we're kind of different than each other is the fact that she's a social media queen and I've left yeah. all of that behind. You left. So that's what we're going to talk about. Well, first of all, to go, go into that. I'm drinking vodka soda water. You're drinking tea. That's right. I'm just so, drinking a little orange pico. Let me just peek orange into pico. orange pico. Here. And I didn't realize how much tea I had in my cupboard until you until you were like, what kind of tea do you got? And I was like, oh, actually, I have like five different kinds. <laughs> <laughs> Very proud of myself. It's doing it for me. Yeah. So we're, we're just chilling out on. This is a, a Monday night episode. We got some candles lit. It's nice and cozy in here. All we need is a fucking fireplace, I think. Absolutely. And I mean, then it would be like a cottage. I feel like this mood. is the first day that we're, I'm actually like feeling the fall. The fall yes. is felt. I'm yeah. good to go. Yeah. It, you, the coldness in the air. Yeah. Like even though it's cold and I hate cold. And the sun's setting a little bit earlier and it's a little bit lower in the sky. Do you like fall? Like is fall like one of your faves? I do. I It's like Christmas. I really like Christmas, yeah. but I resent it until the last two weeks beforehand. So I all year long, I'm like, I hate fall. Fall's the end of the summer. <laughs> it's a total yeah. jip, you know, like, uh, but I don't think it was a jip this summer. It was so dang hot. Yeah, we had a good summer. It was like going to Florida or something. And then 
all of a sudden we find ourselves in this beautiful fall and it seems like a really smooth transition so it is i love fall so much yeah. i am not a pumpkin spice latte bitch no psls for you I, or an ugg boots bitch no. but everything else i will embrace like bath and body works candles <laughs> And layers, large scarves, uh, yeah, Lenny Kravitz I'll rock size a scarf. scarves. I'll rock a scarf, but I'll take it off when I get inside. Mm. Like I am not one of these bitches that wears them inside. No, fuck no. <laughs> scarves are. I didn't, I didn't mean to ding that. <laughs> there, I needed to have the bell. No indoor scarves. <laughs> Ding, ding. Our last episode was very ding heavy. So I'm curious as to the, how this episode will go. Yeah. Sans the alcohol and Vern. Oh, I'm, re- I'm ready to ding. <laughs> I, ready I didn't to tell ding. you this, but I had a monster sugar free drink before oh, I came over here. Oh, shit. Yeah, monster so, sugar free. Yeah. So, the sugar, so you don't get the like false high of the sugar. Mm-hmm. You only get the full strength caffeine and taurine. And like, I'm, I'm jumping out of my skin. I'm, Do like, you good find to go. that you have caffeine crashes when you drink energy drinks? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really uh, bad. Yeah, with most caffeine drinks, absolutely. When I arrived here, it hadn't quite kicked in. I was on a caffeine down from earlier today. Oh, shit. I was drinking the caffeine all day long to get oh, through Oh, me today. too. Oh, jeez. Because you were saying how you didn't sleep good last night. No, I slept horribly last night. Are you normally a bad sleeper, or was it just a special case? Um, no, I'm normally a really good sleeper. It was a special mm-hmm. case. I'm looking forward to some time with family in Ontario. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I, it's been tough to kind of like get that scheduled, and I needed somebody to look after my cat, and I'm trying to figure out park and fly at the airport so that all that was on my mind right and then, and then also i've been doing my, my job as a hairstylist and i work at a place in town and, and so we have two locations and one of them was shut down for renovations so i we had to go to the other one and so we're working out of the element and all over the place yeah it's just, just a mishmash yeah I fucking hate it when that happens and I then know. your brain just can't be still exactly to go to sleep because you're like i got all this stuff i gotta do and ah yeah sleeping's the worst but i also love it at the same time i know well you know my old trick was just to have several glasses of wine and forget anything that bothered you that was your old trick yeah so not to bury the lead but you've (laughs) you've had a whole lifestyle change since since your last episode which was one of the more drunker like laugh heavy episodes that I've done. Yeah. Um. So like when I met you, it was, I love to drink. Mm-hmm. Drinking is never an issue for me. I'm down to drink whenever. So things have changed. Things have changed. How bring us through that. How did that, how does one come to the decision to cut out booze and social media? Yep, social media. So they they came hand in hand. Like, do they count? Do they happen at the same time? Or yeah. So I, I guess I was just uh, I just figured that they I finally figured out I should say mm. that they were all sort of wrapped together. That each one was dependent on the other. So it was basically social media. I I had a codependent friendship that yeah. kind of imploded at the same time, and that was over. Something that happened with alcohol, and the alcohol itself was. You know, it was expensive and uh, and it was, yeah. you know, I, w- I want to say it just has a subtle, deleterious effect on your whole life. Oh, my God. Does it ever? People don't realize that. Yeah. So but some people are really good with it. So like I I absolutely have done everything I can to not shame anybody else about yeah. their habits. And like I took part in the live stream and I was yeah. sober the whole time. Yeah. I had a you fucking did. great time. You laughed when I went to it. I was like, I got to vomit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not, it's, it's just about it not being good for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, and it's, I want better things for my life yes. than I've been able to achieve thus far. And, and I can actually pinpoint, you know, my, my lack of ability to get to the next level to my dependence on this thing that was kind of like holding me back. And so I was a smoker too. Oh, did you quit smoking I as quit well? smoking Holy as well. fuck. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and, uh. So, yeah, so they're all interlinked with each other. I realized that I wasn't going out of my way to do new things and meet uh-huh. new people because social media was, you know, <sighs> allowing me to fake live all those realities from my palm. <sighs> and, uh, and you know, um, the the dating app as well, or apps, I should say. So I was using Grindr and some of the other. Most people know what Grindr is. Hell Actually, yeah. I think Grindr predates Tinder. So we were the first to do that. Of course, Case right, were the first does, to do that. It? That was like the first one. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. I remember the first time somebody said to me, I got this new app on my phone and it tells you how far your next fuck is away from you. And I just thought, this is not good. Ah, 
said this. With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> it was literally like a palpable dun dun dun. Uh. Um, and uh, so, but yeah. And then, so that was another thing. I was sort of relying on that to get me out into the world and to meet new people that way. Yeah. And, and it has its ups and its downs, but mostly its downs. Interesting. Yeah. For me, anyways. I mean, for the for dating apps specifically? Yeah. Because yeah. I think, you know, um, dating apps... You know, people say, oh, well, it's, you know, it's hookup culture and things like that. Yeah. But there are people like myself on there looking for relationships. Hell yeah. But they get is. shamed the fuck out of there. So oh it's like, my God, hey, how's no. it going? Oh, I see you're looking for a relationship. Well, you know, like, you want to fuck? Well, no. no. Like, I like to go on a date and get to know somebody. And, you know, I'm like thinking about long term plans. It's, Ooh, wow. Uh, no, thanks. And I think you came to the wrong platform for that. Nah. This is the, the, the exact same kind of there's a litany of these responses. And uh and for a while I tried to just be like into the hookups, but it just it got tired for me. Oh my god, I can yeah. imagine so. Yeah. So, it's it loses its fun after a while. It does. It's like I don't know, I felt like I was sacrificing a lot to get that little bit of fun. Yeah. But it was just in in the end, it's just a little bit shallow. And and truth is, I'll probably go back to it, but I'll go back stronger. Go back stronger. Yeah. Just, and but like, oh, I love what you said about the the fact that like you're on there looking for a relationship, and people stigmatize it because I feel the same way about Tinder. Yeah. Like I feel like Tinder also has a stigma. Like you hear that you met on Tinder, and you instantly go. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean. Like people instantly don't take it seriously. Yeah. Um. But it's like, honest to God, yeah, you could use Tinder as a hookup app if you really want to. Yeah. Or you could use it as a dating app. It's what you, how you want to use it, you can use it. Yeah. But like this whole stigma kind of, I can totally understand how it would discourage people. Yeah. From like using it. I think um, the idea that now what you do to date is you join a incredibly huge pot of people Mm -hmm. and you are just like you know it's not it's the exact opposite of how things were before online dating was you have to go to a location a building and be inside that building with whomever was in that building it was a limited number of people and and you actually had to face them so you couldn't like be an asshole to them or or you could but you'd probably get a bouncer to kick your ass out of there yeah so I don't know. It's just there's something really artificial about, you know, being in this large group of people and swiping. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's like you're shopping. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't like that purse. <laughs> I want a better purse. And I do. And you're talking like, to 12 persons it's, at the same time. It's this weird thing of like, I do the things that I hate. Yeah. You know, like I do make snap judgments on guys. Yeah. And I do instantly go no no yes well the app the app is demanding you to respond right yeah and so it's you're probably going to respond the way most people would right but the you know like it's you just kind of can't escape things that are implicit to the app so if if the app is dependent on swiping you have to go this way or that way and you just it it, you start to get into a rhythm don't you oh my god hell yeah when i downloaded tinder once and i was swiping swiping and swipe that was a no 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 and i didn't know to somebody i would i I went too far too fast i did that today it's the worst because you then you have to be like a paying customer in order to be able to un swipe no people and you right? know what it's not it's not cheap no i wish that more apps had one time only paid features in right. other words like oh fuck i fucked up i want to go back to that person it's 99 cents or something right if you want to go back or like let's i say wish you... it could be like that rather than you need to pay 12 dollars a month yeah you know, these the idea that it can only be a subscription service is actually like super bad for i've thought about going pro mankind. though i've thought about going to the pro <laughs> to the pro the fact that it's called a pro. People that, have told me they're like, you should try the pro, the pro one, because maybe it would weed out people. And I was like, well, I don't. Is it I didn't actually... look really that much into it, to be honest. Okay. I'm going to look into the the pro features and like <laughs> see if they're worth it. But I don't know if it would. Do, I don't know if it would do the trick. I don't know. It might not. I think they should do something where like, if you want to like go dating for an afternoon, you have the time and you want to dedicate it, then you pay five dollars to go dating for an afternoon or something like that. Yeah. I don't know, but like. Interesting. But but the idea of it being this huge pot that you pour everybody into, 
It's just like a soup of human beings who are just desperate to meet somebody and like it's so sad. <laughs> it's not it's not designed for the the greatest possible chance of human flourishing. No. <laughs> it's really not. Because it would take so much to get to that date. Yeah. You know, and even when you get that date, it's like they could have five other dates that week. You know, th- and and that's the thing. It feels competitive in a way. Yeah. You know, it's like if I, if I'm, if a guy sees me and he's like, you're a hot, funny, fun chick, but there's this other hot, funny, fun chick who's also a dentist. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've lost the game. <laughs> but remember I said to you the other day, like, I would do this thing where it's like, if I seem to have a good chemistry within the first couple of sentences, I would say, well, f- freaking call me then. Yes, Let's talk you the suggest phone. the phone combo. Yeah, and then if they say, no, well, I'm not really into that, well, then automatically I know they're not going to be that, my sort of person. Because if we're ever dating and we're separated by a long distance, I'm going to want to talk on the phone to feel close to them. Because yeah. I, I'm, I'm just that type of person. Like I've always lived far away from my family and had long phone conversations to... You yeah, know, like to talk to them and yeah, and so that's essential for me. So if they can't do that, on, and then also if they say that they don't want to, I sort of feel like they're they've definitely got something to hide. Yeah, there's something going on there. Yeah, like their girlfriend is in the room or their boyfriend. And in I the room. get <laughs> some people aren't phone people. I get that. Um. Yeah, they're not my people. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. I think we need to bring back the art of the phone convo because I think it's a lost art. Even in friendships. Yeah, absolutely. Even in friendships, I feel like, why don't we fucking call each other every now and then? Yep. If we, if we can't hang out physically or yeah. if we're whatever, like I'm any friend listening, I'm always down to chat on the yeah. phone. Always down. Yeah, fucking love me it. too. Um, And I also think that a random phone call shouldn't be something that you're upset to get. Mm. Or like, you know, like, yes, because I think people now with texting, they have this I- idea of their their personal time as being sort of impenetrable. Yes. Because text is sort of taken over from where a ringing phone in your house. Right. Would have been. That's very true. So you get this like built in way to sort of screen your calls. You, you know, most people expect a text first before you call. Well, I don't I don't really adhere to that. I'm going to call your ass. Yes. I will just automatically think, ah, oh, I wonder what's going there's on. There's some things boop, that boop, are, boop. and there's some things that are just too long or it's too much to write out. Yeah. It's a massive waste of time to try and articulate most thoughts in text. And I, I don't Agreed. care what anybody says Agreed. about that. Agreed. Yeah, it's true. Oh my God. It's so fucking true. And every time I've tried to do it, it's backfired on me. And the artist telling a story too is so much better with voice. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Because you can use accents. And I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> I live on sound effects, man. Yeah. Vocal modulation <laughs> is the <laughs> shit. It's the shit. <laughs> but social media, like, so that's a dating maps, but the social media side of things. What were you like? Because I, you know, I kind of knew you around when you were on it. Mm-hmm. But what were you as a social media user like? Before you quit it. Were you well, a heavy user? I'm going to take us back in time to good old 2006. Ooh. <laughs> First year of college for me. Or no, second year of college. Nice. Yeah. I was uh, working in a call center and this girl who was like the coolest young chick in my call center. She had a flip phone at the time. It was the shit. And, uh, and I remember one day she said to me, you're not on Facebook? And I, I just thought... <laughs> Uh, why, why I feel pressure why do I feel pressure about this thing <laughs> so then I finally after a few weeks gave in and had a look at it and I thought well it doesn't seem too bad so then yeah. I signed up for it and the way Facebook has changed oh my god since 2006 it's just become this incredibly complicated like visually chaotic thing to interact with so chaotic and the the difference between the handheld version and the online version is enough that i think some people don't use one or the other but you know if it's you know i think you're probably more likely going to use the phone version of it and that has ways of like never letting you out of the the feed Uh uh-huh but anyways before i get to that um just i think the the original facebook was actually not that bad I agree. It was when it was when it was college only. Do you remember that? I think I, I saw off. the movie, the social <laughs> me, social social network. What was social it? Social network. Yeah, yeah. So that was quite good. So I, I'm familiar with it from that. But 
in and around 2006. She was pretty simple. And then I think it started to go a little bit sideways when you got Farmville and shit like that. Farmville. Did did you play it? No. I did. I fucking loved it. <laughs> Fully admit. <sighs> Fully admit. <laughs> I I just, I don't know. I, I always found like I would get to using one of these platforms in a certain way. And yeah. then it would try to get me to use it in other ways. Like right now, I love YouTube still. Yes. I watch a lot of YouTube, um, but it's constantly trying to get me to sign up for premium. And although I think it's a good idea, it's not fucking cheap. And it has like a music feature built into it, but I already have Spotify. So I've got all my like downloaded stuff that I'm I'm into. I'm not going to sign up and have this overlap here where I'm paying 20 something bucks a month. My God. And it's just work. That's the thing. Social media is work. The yeah, it's too much fucking work. And every single platform now has like a pro. Instagram doesn't have a pro paid for. No, but they have more yet. and more fucking annoying features. So I got God used damn. to the stories. And then yeah. and then the very next thing was the TV. Oh, I hate that. I, and so like I'm so trying many to figure out what that. the difference is between the two, except TV is like YouTube. Longer form, videos. right? And you can you can scroll back and forth through the video. I think so, so I think yeah. pe- early adopters were just taking their stories and posting them into the TV as well. Yeah, and I noticed that first on like uh, hair channels. Oh. Yeah, so like stylist channels or edu- uh, hair educators. Right. Which was okay. So this was the thing I was sad to lose when mm. I gave up Instagram. I was sad to lose two things. I was sad to lose my personalized photo album that I could point to and say, Hey, I, you know, I'm comfortable. I've curated this. You can have a look at it. And it tells you a story about me that, that I want you to see. Mm -hmm. Um, but that, that curated like intentional view of myself is probably not that close, not as accurate to who I really am as you getting to know me. So I don't, but I'm not likely to try as hard to, to allow you to get to know me in person if I have that I can just point to that and like have all these sort of like proxies for real human contact and so but I was never I was never um also another thing about Instagram that really really sucked for me was um where I'm communicating with clients Mm -hmm. um and clients would be using text email um DM on Facebook or Facebook messenger and DM on um on Instagram. Instagram and and I would get confused and I, and wires cross really easy when you could be co- contacted on any of those platforms or responding on any of those platforms and it just the wires get crossed too easy oh my god yes like, there's so a, a many places to, to message people who can keep that straight I can't keep it straight it's so maybe much it's because I was drunk I don't know <laughs> but Instagram direct messaging is the worst I, I think yeah because I think it's easier to mess I feel like with Facebook Messenger that's normally where I first go, oddly enough. Is Instagram not uh, owned by Facebook? They are now. Okay, so they then never used to be, but they, they are now. They should cut out the DM altogether and everything just, should be Messenger. Exactly. One app. One app. One app to roll them all. So, in other words, if you're, but then you have people who, well, yeah, no, it could still just be one app. I was gonna say people who are, like might not be on Facebook, but they're on Instagram it, or vice versa. Yeah, but either way, it should be whoever whatever email address that's connected to messenger is the messaging app yeah one app yeah i agree yeah the strangest thing for me was when messenger detached from the facebook app that was so strange it was very strange strange. i'm not sure i ever really got accustomed to that (sighs) because then there's there's a separate icon you know okay so here's the thing i work in a company that uses slack i Do you like Slack? No. I I don't either. Thank you. It's horrible. And I've heard other people complain about it too. And and it's mostly just the way people misuse it. Yes. It's not necessarily that it's a bad thing for there to be a sort of a closed circuit way for people to communicate within a business. Yeah. It's just that everybody can chime in. And and that is actually what's, for me, what's wrong with the rest of social media too, Mm -hmm. is is, uh, people thinking that they, you know, they can add their voice to things. Mm Mm-hmm. Which, you know, is a silly thing to worry about considering I'm adding my voice to this podcast. <laughs> but this is different. We're it's, not even looking at our phone. No, now. but this is... Like, I have not looked at my phone once. Right. Oh, yeah, neither have I. And I know I have notifications on there. <laughs> You're doing really I'm, good. You're that doing I'm good. real curious about. <laughs> but I'd rather sit here and talk. <laughs> so, you know, I've got the Slack. I've got email. Mm. I've got um, Messenger. 
uh, DMs from Instagram, uh, text. Yeah. What else is there? It's like phone, f- phone, uh, uh, tw- uh tw- potentially Twitter. You're not I, on I Twitter. had that for a minute. Yeah. That's yeah. another DM yeah. thing. Like so you it's like, have. what's that? Six, eight, ten. That's so many. That's a lot. <laughs> and like, you have to always be checking it. Do you use email for personal friend communication or is it more work? Actually, email was, uh, <laughs> when I got email in, I'm, I'm going to say it was 1995, <laughs> maybe 96. Yeah, it was 96. And then I moved to um, British Columbia and I just met these new people and they were like shy dorks like me. And we would go to the library and write each other emails from different terminals in the same room. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I yep. miss that. We were total dorks. I miss when email used to be like that. I know. Like you would talk to your long distance friends yep. as well. Like yep. and send like detailed emails about like your week or yeah. your day. Yeah, but even like it doesn't happen anymore. Even online email platforms like like uh, um oh, what's it called? Outlook. Yeah. And Gmail, like the the features that they've added to that sort of make it harder to look at and make it like you don't really want to stay looking at it too much that's longer tr- anymore. That's so true. It was so much better when it was just basic and then you could just get on with the rest of your life. But they want to they want to try and capture all your attention and keep you there. Yeah. And and all that stuff's really well known. But I feel like people just go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. But I'm I'm not going to be right. impacted by that. Well, if you weren't impacted by that, then they wouldn't be billion dollar companies. I know. Yeah. So they are being successful. And I don't know. It's it hasn't really hurt my life too much other than people think I'm acting holier than now. And they want to try and lecture me about what I'm missing out or like. I don't know. You're not missing out on anything. Yeah, I don't You're think just so. missing out on the appearances of things. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're missing out on. Yeah, and I mean, like... In fact, you're probably gaining more life than most of us. Yeah. That's how people need to think about it. <laughs> well, I'm really fortunate in my job. I get to have lots of long-form conversations with like, yes. all kinds of people. So I think a lot of people will gravitate towards social media because that's a missing element of their life, is they want to have a stronger sense of, sense of social connection. And I I get that every day of my life in hairdressing. So right, and that's probably why you like it so much because you're it doing something productive. Yep. You're doing something artistic, yep. and that's using your talent. Yep. But then you're also able to talk, which you'd love to do. I do love to talk. <laughs> you love to talk. I just had an idea for a podcast. You should what? get a lavalier mic, put it on your shirt, uh-huh. and give your client a lav mic, and you should do a podcast while you're cutting hair. I- Okay, this is so weird that you're in my brain because Were I thought of this of the other day. I was gonna ask you how expensive do you think those are? Um, they're pretty pricey, but like if it was just two, like mm. oh, we'll talk after this. Okay, but I bet you Amazon, I, they might. They're not out of the realm. Yeah, they're not. It, out of the it's realm. funny because I I have clients that have um, told me they never want to be mentioned online because they know that I've come and done your podcast. And, and I've told them, like, I would love to do my own podcast because the conversations that I have with these people are so diverse and interesting. Yes. Uh, just just the, the variety of um, of careers that these people have. Like yes. Everything from, like, garbage men to, you know, doctor. Oh, my God. Surgeon. That's so, in- that would be so fascinating. And I would never have met these people otherwise. And they just enrich my life every single day. Oh, my God. You need to do it. That's such a cool idea for a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be. Yeah, I think it'd be and good. you could mm-hmm. get like the hair clipping sounds in it too, <laughs> and it would really add to it. That would be so. I think we'd have to cool. like we'd have to stop recording during blow drying. Yeah, and I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. I think you're the perfect person for well, to host a podcast. You. you know who who uh, I find really inspirational is Jonathan Van Ness. So why is that familiar? Um, have you ever seen Queer Eye? Yes. Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan. I love Jonathan. JBN. He's yeah, my favorite. He's hilarious. He's way funnier than me, but uh, he, like me, likes long form conversations and has a lot of like a huge variety of interests. And um, he's had a lot of his clients on his show, which is called um, Getting Curious. <sighs> Is that a podcast? It is. Oh yeah. my god. Okay, I gotta, I gotta check it out. Yeah, it's not I bad. It's really it. not bad. I gotta check that out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy fuck. Well, that's interesting. Well, I think, to be honest, I think podcasts are separate from social media and that, like, this is a moment in time. Like, this is a genuine conversation in real life. You know, obviously, you have to package it and put it out there. So if you did ever want to have a show, like, you'd have to get back on social media, which would suck. Well, it's like you were saying the other day. You can have, like, yeah, there's business-related ways, ones. There's ways around it. There are ways around it. Yeah. But it would be trickier. So that's what I want to get to, though. Let's do it. 
So when you decided to deactivate everything, yeah. and not only did you, did you, you deleted your Instagram. You didn't just deactivate it. You deleted it. I did. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. It's like uh, it never existed. That's crazy. And same with Facebook or did you just deactivate? Same with Facebook. So if you were to go back, you would have to build it back up again. Presumably. Oh I mean, I don't know if like there's not a lot I truly trust about any of those platforms and the least of which is that they're not you know like just waiting for me to return because if you if so I creepy I just I know. got chills no it's true though <laughs> because if I google um somebody's name and then Instagram yeah uh, and I find you know in the search results their account and I click on it I can view it but it asks me if I want to log in Right. As my old handle, it remembers right. my old handle in my phone. So crazy. So I don't know exactly how that works. And some computer genius is probably going to be like, "Well, that's only because of this." Or right. if you change your phone, it won't be like that. But I don't right. know. I don't know. But you made an interesting point about your pictures and how when you deleted Instagram, yeah, it it you got your photos back, yeah, but they were not organized in the same way. Yeah, it's really and strange. So it was very weird. They, the, I think. There were there were some changes to the laws regarding um, these platforms have to tell you how they use all of your information now. So they have to they have to give you a little bit more background on yeah. stuff. And so I think it makes it they've made it easier for you to figure out how to get off it. But it's still dang hard. Um, Can I, imagine. I knew I wanted the content that was in there because. Like I said, that album was something that I, you know, I had curated and it was a little component of me. I thought it'd be so cute if I printed all that off in like a Costco photo book or something. They actually have a yeah. website where you yeah. can connect it to your Instagram and it only does your Instagram. Yeah, that's amazing. I think there's a few companies that do that. And and uh, because we have a social media, like an Instagram for the place that I work at. Mm. And they have all these photos up. I thought that would be a really cool thing for clients to see in the waiting room. Just that's every couple genius. of months, they would just print off. But it, you know, maybe they'll get to it someday. They're busy people. Anyway. Yeah. And I mean, the Instagram is, that's the other thing too. It's like, you know, brands probably are posting daily. So that's a lot, to, that's a lot of phone books. <laughs> like you have to keep books. doing them. <laughs> it could be. You would have to arrange it such that you knew how many you were going to, pictures you were going to put up per month. That's true. And there true. was a maximum and like you budget for a year that you're going to have one book a month or something like or, that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And somebody needs to curate it to make that book interesting. With the book in mind. That's such a good idea. But it is a good idea. And that was my idea, my original idea. Thank you. Any hair salon owners out there listening can <laughs> give Vern credit for that. So with um, when you want to get off, now you can find out um, how to delete everything. Right. And how to get all your images and videos and, and actually all of your stories and stuff. You can get all that back. But it's in these like really annoyingly poorly named God. F- file folders um, and it, it takes a while to get it. I can't remember exactly how it went but you don't get the email of it right away and and you can't tell me it takes time to put together all of my information it was a clear stall move yeah and um, anyway so yeah. I finally did get it I think this was maybe after the third time I requested it too I did not get it the first time if I remember correctly wow um, it was irritating I felt like they were holding my feet to the fire holy Shit. Like, are you sure you want to leave? Are you sure? Are you sure? That's so Black Mirror-ish. It is. And this is why I have no regrets. But anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I get all these folders back and it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking through and there's, okay, there's one name photo. So I look in that and then there's a million folders and they just have numerical names on them. Yeah. And I sadly did not put together that that represented a month and a year. And so I went in and I found photos and I'm like, oh cool photos and I just looked at the thumbnails and then dragged and dropped everything into one big file folder thinking that they would somehow be dated in the you know the modified by or last modified date or something Uh but that's not embedded in them because it didn't work like that anyway so they're now completely out of order it's it's every picture that I had but it's lower resolution than you remember it being and there's no comments and there's no record of likes. And so the shit is useless. You know, when you get all these f- photos back and they're out of order and there's, there's, you know, like all the engagement is gone. They don't mean as much anymore. Comments. I don't even think about the comments in the picture. Yeah. And although there's a lot of like pointless comments that, you know, oh, well, yeah. cute or whatever. But still. But there's still the occasional one that's like that somehow makes it mean more. Yeah. 
Yes. And so anyways, it was a little bit of a mourning period. I had to get <sighs> over it. And now, I don't know. Like my, my thing is like, it's really different now. You know, when you came over to my house the other day and you're like, are mm. those photo albums? Yes. And I was surprised that you asked me that because like, it's not something people think about anymore because they have access to your Instagram or to your Facebook photos. And a lot of people right. have like heaps of that stuff. But and they're probably only taking a picture of those old photos every now and then for a throwback Thursday picture. That's right. They're not posting their whole childhood albums on Instagram. That's right. So it's 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 a different way of looking back at someone's life. And I oh miss God, it. Yeah. I so remember fun going through your photographs. That was so cool. Yeah, there's more. You can oh, see I, some more. Like I that love was... that shit. I could do that shit all night. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm gonna have to sneak through. Do you have some? I do, right there, actually. Oh, sh- oh my god, that's just like my house. Yeah, the right but in the like, living room. There's definitely a point in time where I stopped making those. Yeah, you absolutely. know, like there was a distinct point where it was just like everything's digital now. Yeah, and you know, and I think I wanted to keep up with it, like getting p- pictures printed. Yeah. And like photo albums, you know, now it's photo books. You can get a photo book made. I really should do that more. I don't know why I don't. Well, the photo books are a little pricey, but like, um, and some of the, the websites are hard to work with. Like the Costco one's not easy. Yeah. Like you would think that you could make the pictures any size and have, and you know, whatever number of them per page that you would want, but yeah, it's just, it's clunky. It's probably going to get better and. I hope I know, so. But as for right now, it's that's nice. why I kind of like the Instagram ones because I think there is one that you could make it so it's just the same size and single pictures. Yep. Like you just flip through, and I'm like, that's ideal to me because I could just be like, there, make it, and then they just do it. And they yep. send it to me. It'd be really interesting if you had one for the Intoxicated Podcast. Instagram. Oh my god! Because those pictures are really cute, and especially when you see them as like. Like a series, like a, a t- what do they call it? Your tile layout? Yeah. Is that what they call that? Yeah. Yeah. Like the colors complement each other. and Yeah. There's definitely a lot of bright colors. and Yeah. Th- yeah. And I have to say too, as a fan, I've been meaning to tell you the picture, of the, the new picture, the pictures that you had done. Yes. Um, are so nice. Thank They're you. They're so great. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm scrolling through and I see Rogan and I see, you know, like whoever else I listen to on podcasts and yours always jumps out at me. Well, I wanted to change it for the longest time. Yeah. I said, I don't like the whiskey glass. I just don't feel it represents the show. I think the drinking is literally just the gimmick. The show itself is human interest and it shouldn't right. be a whiskey glass. It should be a person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So that's why I did that. And I am so happy with them. I'm so glad that they... I had a friend who could help a girl out with some good <laughs> good photos. I and they were done so quickly too. Like I showed up at his place and he had the whole thing set up and I just sat down. And I was like, mm, mm, I see mm, you were just mm, posing, pose. and then I was like, I was out of there in like twenty minutes. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> well done. Um, what was I gonna say? Can you speak to the more negative side of things? So when you decide, you bet I can. Oh yeah, <laughs> what? Was it about social media that distracted you so much? Um, Let's get dark. Well, I think if you at all have an addictive personality, it it is built to take advantage of that. Um, and so, ding, ding. <laughs> I'll dig it. <laughs> um, so, being that you know, it is you, you. If you know that, and most people do know that, that's the intent behind it. Yeah. Then. In order for you to continue using it, you have to build another layer on top of your understanding of that, which is, but I'm okay. I can handle it. Yeah. Right. And, and I would tell myself that all the time about all of my addictions and, you know, and I'm still telling myself that about YouTube. I'm addicted to YouTube, but at least I'm not addicted to five other things. Yeah, so, I feel like, like you're allowed to have I'm one. giving myself a pass on that one at least for the next few months. So I have something well, to hold YouTube, on for dear life. See, I think that that's different because YouTube is kind of like a netflix like it's kind of like a t like a cable subscription like yeah. but like you're for example watching youtube with, videos but those could be like tv shows but just like you know? with netflix i had to disable youtube's automatically play next video oh yeah okay, because fair. when they built that into it it was like a clear abuse of people's you know Attention. susceptibility to yeah. just like getting stuck in the loop and and when people talk about like uh, rabbit holes and stuff like that, it's like <laughs> if you don't go down YouTube rabbit holes, you're probably dead. Thank you. <laughs> because that it's is so true. I, I go down them all the time, like probably every night. Yeah. But you can't go down a, a YouTube bit. hole and go down an Instagram discovery hole and go down, you know, like 
a Facebook hole and a Twitter hole and all of that stuff all at the same time. So for me, it was like, okay, I recognize the tendencies that I have and I'm doing it in 50 different ways. And there's yeah. really at the end of it, there's less me. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause it's absorbing me away and I'm allowing it to happen. And, and when I have interactions with people like you and like my clients, I feel more like me. I feel more alive, more vital. And yeah. So I just oh feel like God. it, it's just, it's, it is designed to take advantage and it, and I, I mean, I'm just weak that way, I guess. Oh my God. I am too though. But you have good reasons not to give it up. Yeah. And it's one of those things where like this past weekend, I feel like if I were to do it, I, it sh- I should have done it this weekend. Yeah. Um, cause I was in a dark spot, but ra- oddly enough, like I had a really good weekend. Like we hung out on, was it Saturday? I think so. Or Friday. Yeah. Yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Like, we hung out on Saturday. We went to dinner. We yeah. went back to your place. We talked a lot. Like, I was hardly on my phone that night. Yeah, it's true. And I'm just like, holy shit, this just makes me, this just makes me realize that if I don't cut social media out, I need to make an active effort to do more things like that. Yeah. To go to dinner, to go to coffee. Yeah. To even just invite friends over. Like, I always used to think you need a reason to invite people over. Yeah, like, like it has to be a special occasion. Yeah, a special occasion or like have some drinks. Like, let's drink. Yeah. And it's like I'm starting to realize that, you know, there's nights that I feel like I don't want to drink, but I want to talk to people. Adulting. So like, why not come over, sit on the couch, have some tea and talk? Or yeah. maybe we'll watch YouTube together. Yeah. Or maybe we'll watch it. Like, whatever happened to watching a movie together with a friend? Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Well, it's hard to hang out with other people when you're addicted to five platforms. Uh, people are a real like inconvenient distraction from social media. <laughs> um, but they're it's you gr- see people like groups of people together and they're not looking at each other or they just like vaguely checking in from now and now and now and again. Uh, or they're like just uh, the only form of communication between people sometimes in my staff room is to show somebody something they're seeing on social media. Uh, they just turn the phone to other people and people like look up from their social media and giggle or smile and then go back to their it. social media and then it ends. There's a great movie. It's called Eighth Grade. Ooh. Okay. And it's directed by Bill Burnham. And it follows the story of like this chick in eighth grade. And she wants to be a YouTuber. Ooh. And, but she's, you know, seen as the shy, nerdy, uncool person at high school. But then, you know, she'll go home and turn on the camera and she's trying to be this personality. She's trying to be a character and she's trying, like, you know what I mean? She's trying to be a YouTuber. And it's the the idea of her finding herself, like, in this world of social media. And there's a great scene where she, like, walks up to, like, the two popular girls at school and is trying to, like, communicate with them one-on-one. Be like, thank you so much for inviting me to your pool party. And they're just, like, on their phones, not even looking up to her. And, you know, it's, you know, it's just like the stuff in that movie. I was just like, oh, wow. Wow. I can't imagine going through puberty during this time. Like, I'm so lucky where I had a childhood where it wasn't all on the Internet. Yeah. But like, oh, my God. See eighth grade. It's so fucking good. It's I absolutely hurts my heart in a good way. Like, it's it's a heartwarming movie. But like, I'm so lucky that I had a childhood. Yeah, absolutely. You You were showing me your stomping grounds the other day on Google Earth and this this beautiful backyard and I just I completely can imagine a field yeah how you would just like play for hours out there yeah we used to just go run in the woods and my mom would literally ring a bell (laughs) for us to come (laughs) come home for supper because she just didn't know we could be anywhere like we we had like a big field in the backyard we had trails in the woods we had like down the road there was like a big pond that we used to go and sit beside and like look at the frogs and shit like I had such a bitch in childhood in that in that sense like whenever i think about like if i were to raise a family i'm like they gonna be in the country because right. that gives people imagination that gives them an adventurous spirit like go fucking play in the woods yeah i mean i hate the woods now but no i mean i, I like walking in the woods but i don't like camping or anything like that yeah, i'm not i'm not a real big fan of camping either yeah fuck that uh, <laughs> but but i i I think the reason that people are so drawn to social media is, and especially in larger cities with higher population density, there is none of that realness around them. There's only concrete jun- jungle and shops. There's, so you leave your house and, and the only thing that can happen is you spend money. Oh my God. The friggin' little, like the teens that I see at the mall walking around with Victoria's Secret bags and Sephora bags. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bitch. <laughs> Well, I was lucky to get some fucking cover girl when I was your age. Yeah, really. <laughs> I remember I actually stole candy. 
<laughs> Did you I really? Had such little like money or allowance that I I I actually got in trouble for stealing, stealing candy. candy. Wow. I was kind of copying my best friend at the time, but. <laughs> But anyways, like I just think, yeah, I, I'm really fortunate too with the clients that I have that they want their kids to come and get a good haircut. Yeah. So I've met a lot of my clients' kids and have longstanding relationships with them too and seen them grow so cool. grown from very young ages to going off to university. And it's actually been that long now that I've seen people go through that whole cycle. And um, but um, the reason I, I would say that is because I still have hope for the next generation because I've met some really cool kids. You know what? I think that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. I think that we too quickly go to this whole BuzzFeed article or like the memes and stuff of millennials being a dead generation or like dumb or entitled. And I'm like, these people, like these kids are smarter than I was. Absolutely. They have access to way more information. They're taking in a lot of shit. They're learning how to process that shit. And yes, yes, they might get addicted to it. But so do we. Yeah. We're all addicted to it. Yeah. But they're like, they're becoming, I don't know, they just have more information at their fingertips. Absolutely. Than we ever did. And and with the, the pace of that information streaming into their brain. Yeah. I think it's... It's structuring their brains in a way that's unprecedented. Like, yeah. we're not going to know what's going to come out of that. Fuck no, yeah. We won't even understand it. We're just, we're so dumb. <laughs> we're all fucking lost cause. I know. That's the, <laughs> I, I do think, though, I do think that there should be a certain age that, like, I don't necessarily think kids should be getting iPads or iPhones at, Absolutely young, not. at young age. Like, I don't know what the age would be. But I don't think it should be as young as what it is. Well, what I can tell you is that there seems to be a real backlash to the helicopter parenting of, yeah. you know, the last 10 years or so. And I think the parents are like less worried about the kids crossing the street. And the reason the kids were getting the phones is because the parents were worried about the kids crossing the street. Like, you have to check in with me and let me know where you are. I need to be able to get in touch with you. My parents were just happy to get rid of me, which nobody will be surprised by. <laughs> Same. But I would actually go away and that would be good for them. Yeah. And, you know, God forbid anything bad should happen, but it's just something my parents were able to put out of their minds. And why is that? Because they weren't overstimulated mm -hmm. because they weren't made to fear as many things as people are made to fear now. Oh my God, like, oh, my so God, what's happening to my kids? Are my kids safe? Like, I'm not saying this is like a horrible thing, but it does strike me as like a little bit odd to keep a kid in a child safety chair until they're 10 years old. Yeah. I'm sure that there's some research that says it, but it's just like, it just looks like we're overprotected. I'm not saying like 10 kids should be sliding back and forth across a bench seat with no yeah. seatbelt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, it, it literally is putting a kid in a bubble. And so yes. that's going to carry over into everything we do for children. That is. I don't know. That's crazy. Crazy. But then, you know, you expose them to ideas about sexuality really, really young and expect them to have anything to use that information for other than finding things out too early. I didn't even think of that. It's really, that would be it's wild. a really bizarre time to be a child. I can't imagine. Yeah. I, I want to talk to one and just yeah. be like, what? <laughs> How are you doing? Welcome to the intoxicated podcast, 12 year old. <laughs> you can't drink until you're, you know. <laughs> Of age, but here's some apple juice. <laughs> what, um, so did you find that you were a quote unquote, um, did you stalk a lot of people when you were on social media? Like, were oh. you someone who would get fixated on particular people and just like refresh, refresh, refresh? I mean, to a certain extent. Yeah. People have been getting easier and easier to find on social media. Yeah. But they're like, they'll leave one platform and go to another and then change their name. And But the networks are tighter than ever. Yeah. So if you know somebody that knows somebody that knows them, then you can kind of, eventually you'll find some, somewhere they were tagged. Right. And and that that process of stalking somebody is really time consuming. So I'm glad I don't have access to it anymore. Yeah. It takes up a lot of fucking time. Oh my God, yes. My cat requires petting. My <laughs> floors require vacuuming. I need to make some goddamn good food for this body, which is going to expire in however many years. Like, I don't want to go without making good food for myself every day, which is time consuming. Oh, that is time consuming. And I want to hang out with people and I want to like work and earn money. Like I and I want to be in the moment. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. And you just can't do that with notifications every five seconds. So no, sorry, work. I'm, I turned off the notifications on Slack. <laughs> I still have it, but I've I've off. muted many a group chat on Facebook because it's just too much. I don't even know. How it's that just would work. ping, ping, oh god, ping, 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 ping. That's all the time. awful. And it's just like, 
your mental energy having to allocate it See, but I, in I, all these places. <clears throat> it's fucking exhausting. You you seem to have more mental energy or acuity than a lot of people I've met. Like you can, I don't know, you're just like, you're really bright. And I don't picture yeah. you having as a hard a time keeping things together in your head as I do. But I'm, I'm kind of slow. I think under thing. the surface I do. <laughs> So the way it manifests itself for me in my life is that I have a, mm, (laughs) I'm getting into job territory here, Uh -uh. but I would say that I am way too easily distracted by social media to a point where I will avoid other productive tasks. So yes, I might be able to manage all those things, but I'm neglecting like taking the garbage out or like doing the dishes in my sink or like cleaning out my closet. Like I'm purposely prioritizing it above other things. Right. And I don't necessarily think that that's healthy either. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's like, almost like a meta procrastination. Yeah. Um, because it it feels like a good reason at the time. And I think with certain things, like with the podcast, I see the results of being more active on social media, like it, it posting daily content and all that. That helps grow the show. So that's, but it's like the personal social media stuff. Fuck, that can be, I can go down my own rabbit holes with that. Yeah. Like the constant scrolling on Instagram. Well, there's there's like so much research to show that we as social beings can only handle up to like 150 relationships at any given time because that would be the maximum amount of people that you could safely live next to and know for the hundred thousand years before modern civilization. So, um, you know, it's just like. I, people have said forever that's not a friend on Facebook that's an acquaintance why are we calling it a friend where we're over prioritizing this person in our yeah. lives and then it's sort of like devaluing what we think of as a friend in a close relationship Thank you. <laughs> you said it better than I could have ever said it it's just that's so fucking true it's just so true it's this is true and it's this weird thing where like I, I've talked like I did an episode with my friend Mark uh where we talked about millennial life and we touched on social media and the idea of like an online persona and how like I don't feel like what I put out there is fake but I see it as one aspect of me in other words I'm choosing the aspect that I'm putting out there now the aspect I'm putting out there is real but people are perceiving it differently Right. So people perceive me, especially on Facebook, and not so much Instagram. Instagram is my favorite one. I just love it. It's so much better than Facebook. But people see me on Facebook as like a social media queen and a selfie queen. And like I'm hearing queen a lot. And I'm Mm. just like, not a queen. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, in fact, I kind of fucking hate this thing. But people are, because I post a lot, because I try to get, you know, I've been posting polls a lot lately on Facebook. Uh. So I, it's this weird thing where I'm, I'm purposely posting, but then like, I'm not getting, I don't know. It's just this weird thing. I'm not getting the results I want. Yeah. Well, I can, I can imagine you're very visible to people if you're posting a lot. So like their response to you being a queen is like, you're just active on there. You're super, you're active and you're like, you, you know, you look like you're using this well Mm -hmm. rather than sort of sloppily. There's a lot of people who use social media platforms really sloppily. Like their Instagram photos are kind of like, (laughs) you know, you just raise an eyebrow. Like, why did you feel you need to post that? Um, Yeah. And there's like a lot of flotsam and jetsam and like maybe one good thing that you're like oh or a lot of the exact same thing too is really irritating you want to see some variety in that shit yeah otherwise it just looks like you're you know a one note pony i totally agree um but i don't know i've i have this reverence for you where i see you as a bit of a queen right like yeah it's it's maybe not the best word to describe you you're you seem like a pro i don't know Oh, it's just but I can understand I have such that a love hate relationship with social I media. I totally get that. Like it's it's not a hate, a full on hate. Yeah, it's not a full on love. Right. Like I, it's a it's a struggle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like a marriage that I'm working on. Right, right, right. Well, you know, I, the the only thing is like it's not being honest with you. It's not telling you how it's changing and moving on from you. <laughs> it's like it's leaving a lot of people behind that that learned how to use it one way and then it evolves into something else and then before you know it it's evolved into something that you can't relate to anymore i know and then you just need to find a new love <sighs> yeah and facebook she, was the shit back in the day it was the shit before instagram existed do you remember when statuses used to be 
like what you did that day yeah. or what your plans were. Yeah. And that you was perfectly normal. You would post your plans. Normal. And now it's quite like, it seems quite self-indulgent to yeah. like, and people often put stuff that's like overly self-congratulatory or really needy sounding. Um, and I think thirst, it just turns people thirst off. Thirst culture. Thirst. I mean, I'm guilty of falling into it. Yeah, I'll too. post a fucking, fi- like if I'm, if I am feeling insecure, I'll post a fire selfie and get those those fire emojis and I'll be like yes <laughs> this means like I feel like I look hot today look at this picture of me I look hot don't I look hot yeah <laughs> it's a thirst trap fully admit it <laughs> I wouldn't be posting I would not be fucking posting a selfie on social media if I did not want the, want the likes yeah that's the fact of the matter yeah you know likes are good to have but try not to get reliant on them I think yeah. is the key I don't know I don't I don't know about that <laughs> I really don't. I mean, for me, like, I never really ever felt like my look was, like, super hotness, so I didn't really post it. I guess there's a few examples of, like, my beard was looking fly. Yeah. Or, I don't know, but, like, it was very, very little. I, yeah. I guess I just don't expect anybody to ever fire emoji, emoji me. Aww. Or, like, I'd fire emoji you if you're, oh, on, so- sweet. If you're on social media. That's sweet, but I don't know. It's tricky and sometimes you post stuff I think with me too Every now and then I'll post something very personal Yeah Like I posted the audio diary Yeah the audio diary was a triumph I thought it was It was like the most personal thing I've ever put out there It was really brave and I hope that you listen back to it as well because that will be really. Hard. I did once or twice. And did then you? Was, you and, did then, that. and then I was like, "Oh right, because you were editing." I was like, "I'm okay with everything I've put in here, and right. I'm gonna just leave it as is." Because I almost regretted it. But like when I posted that on Facebook, I was like, oh, "I'm really nervous." <laughs> And I was watching those notifications and I think two people liked it. And I was like, I'm okay with this. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Like, I'm not looking for val- It's It was the one thing that I didn't need the validation. So why do you need the likes about the, the hot pictures? I don't know. Interesting. I think that's just a girl thing. I think girls just want that. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe not just girls. Um, I think it's because if we're getting really deep. <laughs> if we're getting really deep. Let's go deep, girl. I feel like that's the only thing. So like in my audio diary, I mentioned when guys compliment me, it's never about my personality. It's about my looks. So I've felt the need to maintain that. And that's really sad. I know. But I feel the need to like put that part of me out there because that's what people are going to. That is so weird to me because the first thing I think about you is your personality. And I'm like, I I mean, obviously, gay, (laughs) gay dick, don't go up for you, girl. (laughs) It don't go up for you. (laughs) So like I know you love me though. <laughs> yeah. Not in that way. Yeah, your personality what, is like But that's what I said in the thing, right? I said, you know, friends compliment me for days on the personality side. Yeah. Um, but guys tend to I don't know. It it doesn't tend to stick with yeah. a romantic like, we might not be partner. acting the same way with potential romantic partners that we're acting with our gay BFs. That's true, but I, I don't find that I I find that I'm pretty good at that. No, I don't know. I don't find that I act different. But yeah. maybe I do subconsciously. Uh, you know what? I didn't watch that date, that the live stream date back. Did, what did you think of it? I, th- I thought it was fine. In the moment, I felt 100% comfortable. All right. Like, that was the weird thing about it. Like, hearing people talk, talk back to me about it, being like, that felt stiff. And it felt like you were working. And I was like... I didn't feel that way at all. Maybe it was the alcohol. Yeah, I don't but know. But I did not feel that way at all. I was just talking. Yeah, I don't know if you seem stiff to me. I actually, I think I told you it was really cool how you were kind of lean back in the chair and swiveling like a yes! CEO. Like you own this. I know. That's what it looked like to me. But, but I couldn't hear any of the audio because the whole room was buzzing, <laughs> right? But, no, like, uh, I mean, I thought it was fine. Yeah. But but this is what I mean. Like, but this is what I mean when I say, like, I don't make marks on straight males. <laughs> I don't know. I think like I'm I'm not a boring person. It's just whatever I'm putting out there is not Hey Sarah sticking with them. Do I do I or do I not have a slight, you know, tinge of ESP slash am I a Oh that's bit true. Of a medium, oh my god, can we bit? talk about it briefly? Sure, let's do it. The fact that I think Vern is psychic and he doesn't know it. <laughs> Which is like Because he predicted w- my death in the first podcast. <laughs> You said that I was going to die in a disgusting way, which I think exotic, will, exotic, exotic and disgusting. So like left eye, what? like from TLC. Well, how did she die? Didn't she? She was in like Jamaica or something and drove off the road. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Or Aaliyah was in a private plane and crashed. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. So like some sort of exotic way. Okay. It's not going to be like by a bus in the corner of Oxford and Coburg in the middle of winter. Like something like that. That was way too specific. And I'm going to make a note (laughs) of that because if I fucking have tomorrow, if I almost have an accident at Oxford and Coburg, like you named two fucking streets. You did not like... Wow. So you said that in the first podcast yep. and then during the live stream, during the segment with Dan, you typed in the YouTube comments, does either of you have an Uncle Bob in the front or back? Yeah. I will pull that up for you, by the way, when we're done recording. I'll show you when it happens. Okay. Uh, and the next day, my Uncle Bob died. So crazy. And I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, I, like, I, I, had, I wasn't close to them at all, but yeah. hadn't seen him in years. But I had an Uncle Bob, too. Oh, do you? Yeah, um, but he's no longer in the family. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh, yeah, he got he got his can <laughs> kicked to this curb curb. Shit. But, um, yeah, I, I, okay, so if I'm going to make another prediction. Yes, make a prediction for I me. think your love is way closer than you think he is. Ooh. I think he's like geographically really close to you. So are you saying that it's you? No, God, no. <laughs> that's hilarious. No. no, I mean, there's a love here, but that's not what I mean. So do you think that you have a little bit of a sli- Absolutely not. But, uh, so how, where but if it works fe- for you, where does the feeling come from? Are you uh, just trying to make me feel better? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I, I'm sometimes when, you know, people are pregnant and they don't want to find out the sex until the baby's born. I just had the really strong sense that it's one or the other, but it's a 50 50. And I also know that that's like whatever, but it's, I don't remember it ever being bang on. I don't remember it being right. Only once did I ever vote for somebody that got into office and I vote every time. Hmm. So like my intuitions about things, I don't think are that psychic at all, but, but it's working for you. So I'm going to use it. Okay. He's near. Okay. He's near. Well, you know what? I'm open to him. Yeah. (laughs) We gonna find him. I um, my whole thing right now is is I do need to denoise my life a bit. Yeah, and I think deleting some apps will help yes. if I don't. And I think what I might try to do, and it might not work, if I don't deactivate the accounts entirely, I might just remove them from my phone. That's a great idea. So that I you have web access, you have a laptop. Yeah, I have it's web fine. A- exactly. So I might try to do some things because like you're kind of inspiring me a bit because I'm seeing how much clearer and happier you are right now. And that's very inspiring. And I think more people should, you know, you don't have to quit it entirely. Like you went a bit drastic. I did. <laughs> you went a bit drastic. I but you don't have to quit it entirely. Quit. But I think anyone who's going through a time in their life where they're rethinking things, perhaps getting rid of that noise is a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, it's, it's the whole, like you can't put anything more in your cup if it's full. My God. You gotta pour some of that shit out. There's so much shit we have to do in life. There is way too so much shit. So much shit we do. And why are we on our phones the whole time? I really We've don't been. Know. I was thinking about this today, actually, because knowing that we were gonna record tonight, I was like cutting through the Walmart par- parking lot to get yeah. home. And I noticed that, like, I'm like actually trained to walk like this. <laughs> yeah. Like, like looking at my phone and looking around at the same time. Yeah. Like, I've become. So So you're simultaneously not being a very good pedestrian and also not getting through your social media very quickly. Um, It's dividing your attention in too many ways. And and each time you have to like redirect your attention is a wasted moment. Yeah. So like if you can focus on social media for a while, get through it and get done and then walk across the street. And not get hit by a car. And then, you know, like just kind yeah. of delineate these things a little bit more. Uh-huh. It's sort of like every every element of your attention is like static in your head. Uh-huh. And you just need to like yes. fix the rabbit ears a little bit. Fix the rabbit ears a bit. Yeah, just move them so you get better reception on each channel you're on. And the other thing too is, is like when you start getting into intense conversations on social media, like you really do become glued in. Like you don't, yeah. you want to keep Now do you mean like typing. messenger? Messenger, okay. And I don't find it to be the same via text. And maybe I just don't text with enough people. Right. But I find like if I'm like the Friday, like this past Friday where I did the audio diary, um, I, I was talking with a bunch of friends about it and I was getting so worked up and I was just like furiously, furiously typing. And it got to a point, I was talking to Jesse actually, Sandra's husband. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I said, Jesse, thank you so much for listening and talking to me today. 
But I, I got to cut this conversation short because I have not gotten anything done. I've been so narrowed into this. It's making me feel like shit. Like, Jesus, fuck. Like, I just got to put an end to this conversation. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not, it's, and we're not even fighting per se. We we're just talking back and forth about um, we were talking with Tinder and shitty guys on Tinder. And, you know, I felt like unpopular opinion puffing that day. And I felt like no one was on my side. Mm. And so I, I think there was a lot of emotional stuff going on. Yeah. And but being so narrowed into that Facebook conversation, I hardly got any work done. Yeah, absolutely. And it made me realize just like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Would you say you're a, OK? This is kind of like. No, it's turned into a therapy session here. I yeah. love it. <laughs> Are you a slow or a fast typer? And fast. how do you type? Fast with your and thumbs? with many typos. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important to risk the typo to get the idea out. As long as you like do a brief review. I'm pretty quick typer. Yeah. That's amazing, but like you, I don't know if you're in the majority. And so, the, anybody else you're having a conversation with might be struggling a lot more to keep up That's than true. you are. Whereas That's most people don't like the differential between my speed of talking and your speed of talking is not that great, especially when we're together. We tend to sync up. Yeah. I have really, I have like 18 left thumbs and none of them work <laughs> that well. They're also like, you know, like I'm good at cutting a straight line in hair. <laughs> But I'm just super slow and uncoordinated. Oh, typing. interesting. And people say, oh, well, just use the voice to text. But I don't want to be that, you know, like that obvious about what I'm necessarily talking especially about. Especially if you're in public or something. And especially if it's about dicks. Dicks. I find it's not as expected via text, though. I feel like Facebook Messenger. And I'll tell you why. So if you text me, it shows up as a green message on my phone. There's no like read receipt. N- you know, your this is what you look like. It's just right. green and white. Right. Because we're iPhone and Android. Right, exactly. Um, iPhone, you have the option of iMessage where you don't have to have read receipts. So a lot of times when I am iMessaging with people, it just says delivered. La da da da. Facebook Messenger though. Here we go. We get into the fucking little check mark beside the message. So if the check mark is not filled in and checked, <laughs> that means they didn't get it. So they either they're not logged into Messenger or there's a connection problem. They didn't fucking get it. Right. You want to see that. You know what's the worst one to fucking see? <laughs> well, actually, okay. Then you get, I'll go through them first and then I'll tell you which one is the worst. Okay. Um, the next one is the blue circle with the check mark, which right. means delivered, not read. Okay. So it's in their messenger they box. Have a notification. But they about have not it. clicked on the message to open it. Okay. Then you see their little icon by your message, which okay. means they've seen it. Right. That's the worst one to see because when they don't respond, you're like, bitch, you ignoring me. And you can tell they're <laughs> they're not typing. Or or you can tell whether or not they're typing. Yeah. And then so you sort of put that together and go, They're not giving me the attention exactly. that this clearly deserves. That's why Messenger's the devil. Right. So, so it's, there's more expectations on Facebook Messenger, I think. Yeah. And I mean, I remember Messenger well enough to know that that's sort of part of the game. And also, it, I was an iPhone user previously, so yeah. I would get really irritated with people. I, like, I'm like, why are you so cagey? Like, why can't you turn on the fact that, <laughs> you know, what do they call that? Read what? receipt. Read receipt. Yeah. So, but like, I would le- have mine on and my friend, she would have hers off. And I would think, well, why would, why wouldn't you want somebody to know that you read it? Yeah. Why, why wouldn't you want somebody to see that you're people responding? people want to ignore people. Yeah. Or like only respond when it suits them. Not, yeah. Yeah. And I get that. It's, it's, it's the downside of having that immediate connection to people sometimes yeah. is that it's easily taken away. And I'm, I've, I, one thing that I like about me is that I will always respond to you. Like, even if it's not a good time. I will not open that message and not respond. There's times that I've seen a message pop up and I'm like, I got to get to that later. And I just won't open it yet. But I will never open it and then not respond because I think that's fucking cruel. (laughs) I understand that. At the same time, not all messages require a response. That's true. It depends on the message. And my phone baits me to look at it. So it'll be like, ding, you got a text message. And like, I just look over and it's just, I'm just close enough to be able to read that little thing you know like because it pops up on the screen and then it disappears so then i have to like i've just seen like one or two words and i'm like this might be important so i have to open it up and see what the message is and then it's there's no new message anymore but i might not have had time to actually respond to that well or had the information that i needed to put into it very like moments from now and then i forget to do it and so people think 
I'm a proud. I mean, they probably think I'm a total douche with this stuff, but it's fine. You know what? You, I you don't make care. a good point because there's so many things that could go into someone not responding to you. There's yeah, there's infinite things. Like we shouldn't immediately go to we're being ignored. Yeah, you might be. You might be ignored sometimes, but you're not always. But I think a lot of people feel like that. Yeah, it's a valid feeling, but it's yeah. probably not that relevant to what's happening between you and the person. So in the true. conversation, sometimes I just fucking write out a response and forget to hit send yeah i've done that so many times and i am totally guilty of claiming that was what happened (laughs) it's a great excuse it is a great excuse i really do feel shitty though sometimes right when i miss messages yeah and then i'll i'll message the person like a couple days later and be like i don't have an excuse i'm so sorry like yeah like it's just it's there's a lot yeah there's on a, on a day-to-day basis there the interactions lot. yeah mine have recently <sighs> gone way down and that's been good because of the lack of social media lack of social media and also i had this really close friendship and yeah. and it was like it ended all of a sudden and now i don't get messages frequently i don't yeah i'm not required to respond to things as much you know, the people that tend to text me aren't necessarily expecting any response right. from me. And I've just noticed that was something that now, like, I'm I'm getting rid of that feeling that there's something expected from me. That's good. And I'm just sort of shedding that. I, it's That it's, must feel nice. It does feel really good. And, like, to, to know that you're living your life on your own terms now. Yeah. And you know? even if... Fully. I mean, I don't know. I'm still figuring things out. But the air is clear, man. <sighs> When you first deleted everything, was it hard for you to not reinstall them? I have or- reinstalled them, and I'll tell you exactly why I did that. Because you were doing a live stream, and I didn't want to miss it on Instagram, <gasps> so I made right! a fake account. Ah! I made a fake account, and then okay, so but it, you your Instagram wasn't working. And you texted me to say your Instagram wasn't working. And that, I thought now I have to sign up was for that a the fake episode Facebook sixty nine live stream. Maybe I don't remember. Yeah, it probably was. I yes, think. yes, I think. it was. You had to because we had planned very, to stream it, and you then had a very lively chick on there, and then a less lively chick. Who was the less lively chick that day? Carrie. Carrie, cool. Carrie was great. Yeah, people want more Carrie. Carrie, I've gotten feedback from multiple people. Yeah. that we want more Carrie. Yeah, and the very so. lively girl, Frankie. Frankie? Yeah. She's super knowledgeable. Oh, yeah. She knows her shit. Yeah. She She's a freight train shit. of information. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll be buying my next sex toy from her. Yeah, absolutely. Sh- like, for sure. And she should work for some company. She works for Pleasures and Treasures, actually. No, but I mean, she should work on like oh, a shit. stage. She, oh, yeah. yeah. What, what's the name of like the best sex toy? Uh, uh, the the Satisfier. The Satisfier. So she needs to like go and pitch to them. That be like she's a brand like, ambassador. Exactly. She needs to be live on stage at conventions around the world. Yeah, I will be buying. And let next. me tell you what this is gonna do for your clit. <laughs> I can just hear her. That's yeah. exactly how she would say it. She is perfect. Damn. Yeah, that was an intense one. So the the social media purge. Ooh, purge I us. like that. The social media purge SMP. also came with smoking and booze. Yeah. So how is that? Well, let me just say, first of all, that like they're not all the same thing to me. I don't no. put them all in the same category. They just all happen to have one trait, which is that I get addicted to them. Um, But some of them are super physically unhealthy. And I don't know, time's passing and I'm getting used to being alive like i like being alive yeah more and more as i get older and i want it to be full and healthy and um long long that's Where so i didn't key. used to care about that i was like my life could be as light and as long as the night is long i feel like that's like a 20s person mentality absolutely of like i'm i'm fine i got time for ah! invincible yeah Poison my body all the time. Yeah. And I did do that. And then I started having some like negative health effects from that. And oh, okay. Like, it, was, it was health related. Yeah. I was getting like these, um, I was getting these like tension aches in my wrist that oh, kind God. of, and I obviously I do hair for a living. So that, but it just like, it got really bad and I realized how fragile my health was, was the thing. And that like, it's, Everything that you can do that affects your health, you should take seriously. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, but not like overly seriously, but seriously enough. Seriously like I'm, enough. I'm not going to start being a fitness model tomorrow. It's not happening. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. I think that's an important <laughs> thing, to, like, for people to realize is to be realistic. Yeah. Especially with all these, like, fad diets going on. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm, like, an all or nothing person by nature. So I tend to put a lot of pressure on myself to do, if I'm going to do something, I will do it 100%. Yeah. And be relentless about it. And then it, you know, it eats up every minute of my, and then I fail at it. Right. Yep. Yeah. Same. So I just, I'm just trying to recognize what's not good for me. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> oh, um, just, just the quitting of smoking and booze because oh, right. I, I only did it once. Um, where I, I didn't drink for, I think a month. Oh, okay. Uh, obviously I, I feel like my relationship with booze is like an ongoing thing. Like yeah. it's something I have to keep in check. Uh, but I totally understand why people don't do it. Yeah. Like, like I have a drinking podcast around drinking. Yeah, so yeah. trust me, I love drinking and oh. I love and I appreciate it. But Believe I also me. totally see the other side of it where it can just ruin a person. Yeah. Well, and that's really fucking scary. You know, I could see the danger of that in my life was like, I, I did actually worry a lot that smoking would be the thing that would prevent me from meeting the right guy oh interesting so okay. that was always something that i at some point would have to reveal to somebody because i was really good at hiding I it i didn't know you were a smoker exactly i would wear a patch all the time when i would ah. have to be around people and then when i knew i would soon be by myself i would rip the patch off and allow the cravings to come back and then i would enjoy my cigarettes in the late evening and early morning oh, and then apply a patch Oh, crazy yeah i know I absolutely agree. It was total lunacy. And actually, something like this, like coming to your house in the evening, I probably would have weighed in my head, how much do I actually want to do this versus get home, pour myself a glass of wine, take off my patch and have a cigarette? And I would have probably done that instead. Oh, man. So this this right now, the fact that I, I'm hanging out with you and enjoying this conversation is a positive result of me making that decision. Yes, it will come now. Yeah, so how, it's how, good to be able to come. How long, <laughs> how long free of smoking are you? So I started not taking the patch off on the 7th of June. Wow. Yeah, and then I have all these dates in my phone, actually. I was thinking about, <laughs> I had this moment where I was like, I should mark this occasion with a tattoo. You should. Well, I'm going to give it some time. I'm going to think about that because that is a very permanent mark. And who it's knows? I don't want to put the pressure on me like I can't fail at this. So um, the last patch that I put on was the 23rd of July. So it's ah. like it's quite and that's like less than a week after the last time I drank, which was the 19th of July. So, And actually, I don't really fucking miss it at all. The drinking or the smoking? Either. Or both? Really? Not at all. And and I'm totally excited to be around other people when they're drinking. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. My parents are both 65 and they both recently decided to, within like the last couple of years for my dad and more recently with my mom, to change their relationship with alcohol. And they both were like hardcore smokers and they both quit when I was like, I don't know, I was like in my early teens or something. But the alcohol is really recent. And so wow. I, I can really see a lot of parallels between my relationship with it and theirs. Oh, shit. And um, yeah. So it's crazy. And they're both really content to be doing what they're doing, too, and changing that relationship. Um, and so it's really good. And I'm still like crazy off the wall me yeah. all the time. Like, I'm just like. I'm just not as careless. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's the thing. Huge. I'm forced to deal with more of my emotional distress as well. And maybe like when I wasn't sleeping last night, I was thinking to myself, well, this wouldn't happen if I was still drunk. had some booze in the house. Yeah. Cause it can be such a distraction. Yeah. And that was the thing with me. The only time that I gave up alcohol was when I was finding myself drinking when I was in bad moods only. Yeah. And it was, yeah. not, it was not going good. Yeah. So when I started actually like on the cusp of ruining certain friendships because of my behavior when I drank, I went to AA. Like, didn't think I was an alcoholic, but a friend of mine was essentially like, you know, I don't think you're an alcoholic, but I think you're a problematic drinker. And maybe going to a meeting would give you some perspective on like your habits kind of thing. And I did. And I still have the coin. And I'm like, that like... Hearing other people's stories, I was just like, Sarah, 
you got a good girl. Yeah. Like you, your little life issues are nothing. Yeah. And that's, that's a good thing to do. It's a good thing to see some perspective in it. Because now like when I'm in a bad mood, I just avoid it entirely. Yeah. Because I know if I fucking drink when I'm pissed, I'm going to piss off the people I love and the people I love are worth way more than booze. Yeah. Hundo percent. Yeah. I agree with you. So drink to feel better. Not even, or no drink to feel even better. <laughs> I messed that up entirely. It's no Freudian don't slip. Drink, don't drink to feel better. Drink to feel even better. Yeah. I can see that. That's the kind of motto I have. Yeah. And also just, I just got to watch how much I drink in yeah. a week. Cause I, my, my it. former motto was drink to celebrate, drink to, uh, drink to calm down. Drink to, um, be social. Drink to pretty much drink to anything. Drink to the cry. O- and you know what the funniest thing is? I have this uh, tremor in my hand, and oh, I have yeah. a do- I have a doctor client. She's a neurologist, and she noticed it. And so we had this conversation about you know whether or not I should try this drug called propranolol, but it's not recommended for people with low blood pressure, which I have. Oh, okay. And she said, you know what the best thing for a tremor is? The yeah. only thing that, yeah. She's like, you just need to have a small amount of vodka before you start your shift and you're going to be fine. And I did notice after that that like when I would have a drink or two that my tremor would just completely go away. Wow. It just affects your parasympathetic nervous system or something like that. Is there any way like they that. can get you, gave you that without booze? So the propranolol is like the drug that they would right. normally recommend for that. Um, it might not be bad for me, but it's not a hugely bad tremor anyway. And in mm. fact, the tremor can somewhat be exacerbated by regular alcohol use. So Interesting. Double-edged sword. Absolutely. It helps you, paradox. but it also makes it worse. Yeah, paradox. It would only help it if you did it in extreme moderation. Yeah, microdose. Moderation's tough. I know, but you know what I want to try? Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you'd be up for this anytime, but I would try like a very small amount of mushrooms or something. I've again. been more and more curious about it. Just like the a more very, I hear very, about it. Yeah. 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 Small amount. Like and not like a teenager. Like, do you feel anything? <laughs> but just like take it and go to a movie or something. But like yeah, I, a I, really small amount. I actually totally agree. Maybe yeah. maybe we could do that some night. Yeah, that'd In be the really safety cool. of an apartment. I don't yeah, want to. Yeah, yeah. I do not. I do not want to be out in public at all yeah. when I'm on any type of anything. I hear ya. Other than booze, which yeah. I can do. But yeah, no, that's. <laughs> but I'm just curious about that because I think that those things used properly and maybe like in small, small amounts. You know, this is becoming more and more popular in places like. Silicon Valley. And, yeah. You know, they're always talking about how like creativity is increased by microdosing and they actually do it as a matter of, you know, daily routine to yes. have be more inspired and I wonder. less distracted by, de- you know, depressive thoughts and things like that. The correct dose is the right. It would yeah. have to be because I don't want to see anything. No, absolutely not. That really freaks me out. I mean, I used to play with this stuff a lot when I was a kid, so I have seen full hallucinations. Yeah. And, you know, played around with the LSD and the mushrooms, and, and I had my time with that. Um, I don't need to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> you good. I've seen was some Was it positive things. or more negative? It was both in yeah. equal parts, and, yeah. and my expectation that it was going to be like the first time or be amazing um, usually caused it to be less good. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of a crapshoot and you never knew where you're getting it from or what was actually in it. That's what makes me the most paranoid about drugs. Yeah. And I mushrooms guess. are just like natural shit, right? That's very true. Yeah. That's so very true. We are quickly coming into drugs. Drugs. Drugs are going to be well, on the corner. And yeah. And I'm wondering <laughs> about what I should do for like when it is legal because I might do a high episode. Uh, I don't see any problem with that. But I think what I might do is get a low dose edible and do edibles yes. again. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. Because my experience on edibles that I, I had before when someone made them was not a fun time and I thought I was going to die. But if I bought them from, <laughs> you know, like a regulated place, yeah. maybe it would be different. And I think you have a friend, Andrew Vaughn. Yes, I do. That guy's so cool. I would like to have He should, Andrew, come back on for the uh, edibles episode with me. I'll need a spirit guide because <laughs> I don't I don't know where he's gonna I'm, be your shaman. I don't know where I'm gonna go that night. <laughs> that night's gonna be. <laughs> I think your low dose in, might underwhelm you a little. Impotsicated. Impotsicated. I love it. Who came up with that? That We're was gonna Danielle. find out what your potential Danielle, is. I, I credit Danielle for that. She came up with it. 
What was I gonna ask? Shout out Danielle, I love you. Shout out to Danielle. We you you Danielle and I had a great evening of yeah. talking. That was we covered a lot of bases. It like really got serious too. Yeah, it did. Like we we got onto some it stuff. It wasn't too serious. No, like I love fucking conversations like that. To that me, good every once in a while to, to me that's fun. Yeah. Um, so question for you: In deciding to give everything up, did you have like was there a particular like rock bottom moment? Or yes. Was it, yeah. Yeah, there was a couple actually. Yeah. So the first one was in June. My friend that I'm not friends with anymore. Yeah. She and her husband and their son and I went. This was our second year in a row. We went to this place called Driftwood Resort in right. Advocate Harbor, which is a pretty dang magical place. Yeah. Um, but I think we, all of us, and and definitely myself, and primarily myself, brought some unexpected baggage. So I was really dealing with this like. What am I doing with my life? I was having an existential crisis and I I was no no closer to I thought I had it somewhat under control at that point, but it wasn't. And so the couple of nights around the campfire and everybody else's like the feedback from everybody else's like own emotional state was really just grating on me. Like I didn't feel strong. Uh, and so I just I had like a drink too many because that drink felt really good. And then um, can see how that would happen. We were sitting around, and you know, like they were kind of making sure I was all right, and giving me water, and we were having this chat. And and then he made a comment to me about how I was reminding him of uh, David Hasselhoff um, in the videos. I don't know if you've seen that. The where, sandwich. Yeah, it wasn't a burger or something. Anyway, his yeah. daughter's like trying to feed him, and it's it's pretty degrading. Yeah, that would be not a nice thing to hear. No. And um, but he didn't really mean it like that. Right. I think he just meant it really, you know, like it. The scene reminded him of that because yeah. I was actually on the floor eating. OK, fair enough. But I wasn't and I wasn't like necessarily but sorry. I was drunk, telling a whole story. Right. As a drunk person, you probably wouldn't take it that way. Yeah. And yeah. especially since that was the underlying fear of my life that I was right. turning into nothing but a hopeless alcoholic. And I had just convinced myself that was actually what was. Yeah, you know, happening, and <sighs> and he pointed to it, and and I took, I well, I didn't really take it out on him. I just stood up and I said that was really rude, and I sort of marched off and locked myself in the bathroom, or forgot to lock my close myself in the bath bathroom, and then she opened the door and I tried to push it closed and told her to fuck off, and apparently right. like it was like a bit of a loud scene. I don't think much more than that happened, but I woke up the next morning, didn't realize. What happened? She did not get to sleep. She's, she is a very emotional person who tends to brood about things. Um, you know, and and the depth of her emotion is a it's a blessing and a curse. But I think yes. in, in this moment, it it really got to her. And I think with the added element of she was probably worried about me. Yeah. You know, like because that was really out of character. Right. And then you know her son, he might have been woken up, and there was there was just a lot of emotional tumult. I would be on. the same probably if I was her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. and it was a good thing that she took me to task on it because right. the whole rest of the day and the drive home, um, I just thought about it and thought about it. And we talked about it and I realized like I'd let a lot of things in my life kind of slide. Yeah. Because, you know, I was too busy and too tired <sighs> and in this cycle of like drinking in the evening and then waking up tired and not yeah. able to really have enough energy for the day and sort of borrowing energy from later on in the day to just stay awake and afloat and on for people because my job is very social, like I said before. So, um, but anyway, so Damn. it was this endless cycle and, uh, and I realized like I had, I had all these other interests that I wasn't able to explore. I, you know, I, and to be fair, I haven't really gotten fully around to that yet, but at least now I don't have that to point to as the yeah. thing that is the barrier for me. You could go there if you wanted to. You yeah, just need to get and there. I yeah. I may well do that. I think it's definitely something that I need to do. I need to get back to you know more creative things and whatever. Yeah. Anyways, so that was one rock bottom where like it really disrupted our friendship. Yeah, it destabilized it enough that it would soon after that completely implode. Um, but. The next rock bottom was I was out drinking with a friend and it was after work and I had my car and I needed to get home that night. And I had definitely one too many drinks to be driving home. Damn. And it was a Thursday night and there was no traffic on the street. And I think I was OK, but I didn't remember having a conversation with my mom in the car on the way home 
the next day. Oh, shit. So, you know, like regardless of how functional I may have been as a regular drinking person, like drinking regularly, I mean, um, that was an error in judgment that I couldn't really let myself ever get away with again. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, damn, yeah. Yeah. So, That's crazy. And I had no one to blame but myself and my choice to go and have those drinks that evening even when did you realize car. oh yeah because you didn't remember the conversation with your mom is that yeah. when you realized i was probably too drunk to drive yeah i mean i i woke up the next morning i was like well that was dodgy yeah. and then i talked to my mom later that day and she's like well you you said you wanted to talk tonight um when we talked last night and, oh, uh, shit. and then you were like what i don't remember talking to you at all so i, I would have driven all the way across mckay bridge oh my gosh and i so remember scary. i like have a visual memory of the the journey yeah but i mean i could have been pulled over i could have lost my license i could have though but those are the like the least of yeah. bad things that could have happened yeah I, um, I almost don't even need to say it but i will i could have seriously injured someone or killed myself absolutely and, that's crazy but you know the other thing is like you could accidentally walk out into traffic and be hit by a bus so you know your negligence at any point may cause your demise it's true but it was it's something that i can forever make sure it doesn't happen again damn do you see what i'm saying oh yeah that's a rock bottom for yeah, sure absolutely and Fuck. so uh, I'm admitting that now and I've told lots of people about That's that crazy. and I will keep admitting that to people and telling people that was the kind of the turning point for me. Um, but you learned from it though is the thing. Yeah. I mean, I could have made a habit of that. Yeah, you could have. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people do. If you had. Yeah. Fuck. Like when you hear people talk about like they live in the country or they grew up in the country and like it's really commonplace to drive home drunk from a hoot nanny. Yeah. You know? Hoot nanny. <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> That's a great word. Anyway, so that was uh and I think that day I did also have another cigarette, even though it had been a while uh, since I quit. Yeah. Because somebody who was drinking with us was smoking and so I joined her and I thought, I just make really idiotic decisions. And I've made a lot of really bad, dangerous decisions before, you know, out. It was like somebody's right. passing around drugs. Oh, sure. Why not? Yeah. You know, like and just end up not in a good way. God damn. So I never need to worry about that error ever again. Holy shit. So I'm really grateful for that. Good for you. Yay. Me. Good for you. <laughs> not good for you for drinking and driving, but good for you for realizing it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you turned it around. Yeah. And I'm here to tell the tale, man. You're here to tell a tale? Yeah. And if drinking I, is getting in the way of you achieving your dreams or you're making bad choices. Don't of, do it. You know, like you have to like look at that and be like, okay, well, can I alter my relationship with this substance? And I just knew I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. just like be a sometimes drinker. Yeah. I can, I can easily be a never drinker. But like people, people... I'll often get on my case as well if I say, well, I've cut out sugar. They're like, what? You cut out sugar? What? I could never do that. Like, I'm, I'm not a fan of exclusionary diets. I don't believe in that. And I'm like, well, for me, it's just a lot easier. I never have to, like, have a debate with myself. Mm. So that internal dialogue just doesn't even... It's like a shortcut. It's like a framework that I can trust that will allow me from... Prevent me from ever getting out of control with things. Interesting. Yeah, like give me another butter tart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love butter tarts. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Fucking great. And it's, I think, what would you say, like, because you said that you're cool with being around people who drink. So you're not necessarily like, you don't see someone drinking and think, I want that. No, I see someone drinking and go, I think that's great for them, but it's like not good for me. Yeah. It's really not. It's, it's almost as though I would liken it to, um, like you know kids have peanut allergies they're like they just really would yeah. rather not have peanut butter yeah 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 that's very it's true. like a no-fly zone right yeah right so i don't know if it's like an allergy or something for me huh. like just making well i mean like everybody makes really stupid choices when they're super drunk but and i think the important thing too is to distinguish between like like the jokey stupid choices and the real stupid choices yeah. in other words like you might say something to a friend when you're drunk, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a life changing. No. Lesson. But I mean, I've made stupid choices with sexual partners when I was drinking. Oh, God. Yes. Yeah. And I think everybody one. does that. 
That's... Everybody does that. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a sexual health clinic. Holy fuck. <laughs> right? That is a huge one. Uh, Ugh, girl, I so have much gone of... to visit them. <laughs> 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 they have administered certain things to me. <laughs> and I'm better now. <laughs> and like, I think that that's, oh my God, I never even really thought about that facet of your life, what, of your life going forward. Like, you're not going to have drunk sex anymore. No. No. But it's um, going to be so much better. But also, like, I, I think it can be, it can kind of get me down that I don't like the dating apps. Like most people, I struggle with them. Yeah. Um, but I also now probably don't want to go and hang out at the gay bar to try and snag a right. hot date. Yeah. So then I'm like, uh, where, do I, where go? do I go? But where do you go? I don't know. I just, uh, I, coffee shops. I don't know. I know lots of people. Maybe I like meet up for events and stuff. I think that single people need to, we need to form a troop. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I mean this when I say this. Um, because yeah. there's so many single people I know, and I feel like none of us go out. Yeah. And that doesn't, that does not mean, like, let's go till 2 a.m. to a club. Right. But maybe it's, let's go to a restaurant, and, like, people who drink can have a drink. People who aren't drinking can just get an appetizer. Like, I don't know. There's ways around it. Yeah. If, if the people who don't drink are comfortable with it, I say we fucking go out in public and try to meet people. Yeah. And not be on our phones the whole time. Yeah, it would be Let's cool. take this full circle and not fucking go on our phones. It would be cool if you had to deposit your phone in like a personal phone locker or something. There should be a bar yeah. that like doesn't let you in without a, like you have to leave your phone as yeah. like your cover charge. Yeah. It's oh like God. an old fashioned speakeasy or something like you have oh to my God. leave something at the door. I love that idea. It's a great idea. I would totally go to a place like that. It would drive me crazy. <laughs> and I would 100% be anxious. You'd be like, guys, I'm just going to go out for a phone break. I'll be right back. But for me, it's I think I just need to get over a hump of not having the phone and then I'm good. Yeah. But it's like that first couple hours. It's crazy. Like I've noticed you haven't really been checking in that much. Because I'm, I'm, ta- I'm enthralled. <laughs> enthralled? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's the right word. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's part of why I love the podcast, right? Yeah. Because, like, it's a moment away from the phone in a weird way. Yeah. It's a good it can also break. be, like, a gateway to connect all of those worlds simultaneously. So yeah. I've seen you, like, hook up the live stream and interact with the messages coming through yeah. that. And then, like, and then we're making eye contact. Then we're talking. Then we're talking to people in the live stream. So and- it's like. Kind of like switching modes. Yeah, it's sort of like fun being, you know, a point of intersection between all those things too. And I was like, a I conduit love for them. streaming. Yeah, it's like, really fun. I've really discovered this, like from the twelve-hour stream and the stream that we did. Yeah, I'm like, I think it's so fun. I think I want to make it a monthly thing, like yeah. where it's like maybe like the first Friday of every month. It's come over to Sarah's if you want to be on the stream. Yeah, like and have it be kind of like a party stream. I am totally digging that idea. Yeah, I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> I'm totally gonna make it happen because it's so much fun. So, Sarah, tell me about your social media goals going forward. What social do you media want goals for you? going forward. Okay, I think, especially based on what you've taught me, that okay, there's a couple things here. I think I do need to pick a time in the evening where I turn off the fucking phone. Yeah, because I'm on that thing until I close my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the the thing about that is, going back to, and I would like to have a discussion about YouTube as well before we close with the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're both YouTuber addicted. Super addicted. I'm addicted to YouTube because of ASMR, and that helps me fall asleep. So that's why I'm torn about the turning off the phone, because I watch the videos, and I put my headphones in, and that's usually what will make me tired to the point of falling asleep. Right. So ASMR has helped me sleep. But then I have a screen. <laughs> is there an app? So is there's this. There are actually um. There are apps and there's also podcasts. Okay. But I like the mix of visual and audio. Gotcha. So maybe what I'll do is investigate the audio only and see if it has the same effects. Because if that's the case, that would be amazing. Yeah. But I think I have to start shutting it off before I go to sleep because I think that's why I'm not sleeping good. Just out of curiosity, yes. Do you think you could turn the screen brightness down to like? 20, oh, I always do that. Twenty five percent. But what what people, what doctors tell you, and what all the articles tell you is like any screen time at all is bad. Right. I think that they say that you're supposed to have at least an hour of no screen time. 
before you sleep. But they also recommend reading, and that's like your eyes are darting around. Yeah, that's very true. Maybe it's just the light. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because I feel like my eyesight is a piece of shit because of all the screens that I stare at. Well, because think about it. I'm on a screen at work. I'm on on a screen on my phone. Editing is another screen. Yeah, that's true. It's just screens all day. Yeah. Um... Which I love. I love that aspect of my life. But fuck. <laughs> I want to go to a cottage. Yeah. I saw there's a comedian on Instagram who just turned 33 and she went away for her birthday. And like she posted a photo of like a mountainscape today being like, this is what I did this weekend rather than looking at my phone. I had a great birthday. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. And I was wow. like, goals. Birthday goals i would fucking my birthday's in march which fucking sucks it's the shittiest month why but i would love to like go away somewhere for my birthday we should go away for my birthday weekend that would be fun like a little um have you heard of wind cottage? horse farms where's that you need to take a look at wind horse farms okay. it's really cool they i mean like if you want to go full tilt like silent retreat or like buddhism style like meditation i don't want to go that far. <laughs> Meditation is something I need to dip my toe in and not go full on. <laughs> Dive in, girl. Dive in. <laughs> Dive in the deep end. Would you ever do something like that? I, Me- meditation or like? I think I'm headed that way. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I could I'm probably see that. I'm just not headed that way quickly. It's taken me a while. Yeah. I'm heavily critical of like dorky sounding like I am too. Shit like like mm. ohm. Ohm is so dorky. Um, yeah. But. You know, it's very effective for a lot of people, and I don't want to take that away from people. But I can imagine now that you're without the social media and all the fucking constant yeah. at you, meditation is probably would probably be easier for you because the attention span, right? Yeah, and I, I'm, I've often said too. I think I will probably be most successful at finding potential partner if I'm doing stuff I like slash is good for me to do yeah. with other people who have similar goals. And I do actually see, I'm getting closer to seeing yoga as like a, a viable um, form of both like calming my mind and getting some physical release. And meeting some people maybe. And meeting some people. That would like and get, usually, I don't know okay. if you've been to a yoga fucking class, but the guys are fucking hot. Usually, yeah. And especially at Moksha because they are dripping, girl. I. I will be a hundred percent honest. Hot yoga is the opposite of ever what I want to do in my life. <laughs> it it combines all of the things that I feel like are my personal hell, which is sitting still. You're still but physical in a weird way. Like you're you know you're not moving around to a high degree, but you're meant to move around slowly in a controlled s- fashion. Slowly and controlled, which I don't like. I like high impact and fast. Yeah. Um, and it's fucking hot. Yep. I'm like. No, no. I but, would melt. But the men's is. is. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if they're my type, though. I kind of go for the dirty rock star type. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Or comedian type. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's so funny. I was um, at work today. I said to my coworker, Sean, we were looking out the window. And, oh, my God, that guy's really hot. And he was standing with a couple of other nicely dressed guys. He looked like he was wearing a whatever tracksuit. But he turned around and he was covered in grease. He looked like. He would may- maybe just been panhandling, like, <laughs> but from behind he looked like a, like a really hot, broad-shouldered dude. And then he turned around, and was like, "Wow, you're a complete dirtbag." Wow. Um, he suddenly became attainable. <laughs> 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 My God, yoga though—that's interesting. Yeah, I don't think hot yoga's meant for me either because I I went a few times, enjoyed it a couple, and then hated it the last time I went and said never again. I just don't like it i can't i just know it's not for me yeah i totally understand the appeal yeah but i just know that i like more high impact workouts that hurt like i want to hurt i want pain (laughs) i don't want to feel a gradual stretch like i want to feel my legs burning i understand that impulse a lot of people like classes like body pump and stuff yeah, I hate that shit. I don't I, because I'm constantly like comparing myself to other people in the class and trying yeah, to keep that's up. True. And if I for a moment feel uncoordinated in public, yeah, I feel like an asshole. Yeah, but if, if I nail it, I'm like a terrible winner. I like, I, oh, wasn't I gorgeous? I was so like coordinated today. And 
I'm just waiting for that compliment. That's why I like my circuits. fire emojis. Individual circuits because you're not in a class per se. Yeah. But you just do the circuit and you're done. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Exercises. That's something I have not done in a long fucking time. Let me yeah. tell you. Uh, I don't I don't really know what the answer is, but I'm just sort of like flowing. I'm trying to like just gently go. And I think the fact now. that you're going about it slow is the right way to do it. Yeah. I've been accused of kicking this off with too many exclusions. Like I lost this dear friend of mine. Yeah. That really needed to happen though. Yeah. And um not just for me, but for her. Yeah. And I also you know, like kicked all these other habits and like, you know, people say you, you, you do these things too suddenly and too much of them. And you're definitely going to fail. I don't really see that any of that's coming my way. Like things are going pretty smooth. Yeah. You're doing people well. are being really supportive. And, but even aside from that, I just have no desire to backslide. No. And I don't see it at all. And mm-hmm. like you have been around, like you were around the 12 hour live stream of drunkenness, which was hilarious a shit show yeah it was hilarious and it's it's good that you it's good that you're i don't want to use the word strong enough because that's not the right word but that you're in a place where you can be around people who also drink because i wouldn't want to fucking lose you as a friend yeah i know and you know that i'm a big alcoholic so (laughs) not really (laughs) i'm 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 not really an alcoholic i make the joke but i'm just stubborn i've made a decision yeah and i'm not gonna change my mind there you go yeah that's it's as simple as that i feel like that's when i did actually go off social media the first time interestingly enough proving people wrong was a huge motivator yeah absolutely like like people didn't think i'm, I'm gonna last i'll show them people are haters man yeah like if, if i were to deactivate facebook tomorrow people would be like she ain't gonna last 24 hours mm, interesting So, like, for me, a lot of the motivation would come from, and that's sad that I think that way. That's defeating the purpose. (laughs) I'm supposed to delete it to not care what people think anymore. And yet, my motivation... Life is full of paradoxes like that, though. My motivation would be to do it so people think I'm strong. (laughs) Fuck! I just talked myself out of it. But, no, you could say that that people thinking highly of your strength to have completed that task is is an adequate motivator and you should be motivated by things like that but it's a more real motivation than a like right it's that's definitely very true. yeah that's very true yeah it really it, it makes i i just keep thinking about it and i'm like i need to do it i don't know how i can do it yeah i feel like i, I feel like with me it's so much based around moods and like depressive states that when I'm not depressed, I don't feel the need to delete it. Yeah. Oddly enough. I definitely have felt like that about all the things that I've struggled to let go of as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, I feel so much more in control when I'm not doing this, but uh, but I'm going to get back. I don't know. It's just, it's tough. For me, the only way to do it was cold turkey. Cold turkey. I mean, if you call stepping down through the nicoderm patches cold turkey. <laughs> no, I think that's pretty cold turkey. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Did you have any like weird like withdrawal effects from like not drinking? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I became anemic. Oh, shit. Yeah. And no one's told me that that's why I was anemic. But um, so but I did look it up. Like, what are some common side effects from or during recovery from alcohol abuse and, and anemia and nausea? And so I thought I had this like flu coming on for like four days damn and it just turns out that's what was going on so my like my iron blood binders were really low or something had all these blood tests my my friend was like there for me through the whole thing and it was really hard that's insane it was really hard but um so i missed several days of work over that actually oh my god beware if you're gonna quit drinking be prepared to. and how often did you drink (laughs) daily daily like a glass or two of wine a day it was a very uh normal thing for me to do to stop at nslc on the way home wow and which bottle of wine am i going to purchase tonight would you drink the whole bottle every time wow see i always hear people doing that i'm like i just don't like wine enough to do that (laughs) and the truth is i don't really like wine that much it's kind of gross it is kind of gross. very aesthetic it's it's and that's the other thing is like 
the you know like your body ph is really important to how you process food yeah and so like i had a lot of bowel upset oh shit god too. oh shit i can imagine shit is right <laughs> that was a major concern Fuck. and it's ongoing like ah. i was telling you like bloating is like yeah problem. we were talking about this before the mics turned on Ugh. about our digestive problems no the pipes are all fucked yeah and that's that's a real struggle when um like my my episode with Moxie Munchies, who has a food YouTube channel, like we kind of talked about the idea of like creating content around indulgence, like in other yeah. words, like a drinking podcast, like, you know, people tend to be like, oh, are you hammered every single episode? And I'm just like, I just, there's no way my body could take that. Right. Like, this is a fucking dream right now. Having one drink. Like, this is great. <laughs> this is perfect. I don't need to be drunk for, every, and I don't want to be drunk for every episode is the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I get that for the branding. That would that would be cool. But Jesus fucking Christ. Well, it's sort of like implicit look out for in me. the name that it's the talking that gets you intoxicated. Talking. Yeah. That's yes. the, the focus. Ding. Ding. I'm too lazy to reach. Yeah, I can't the reach. The bell. <laughs> but this was so but much fun. stuff. <laughs> but Steph, thanks so much for coming on. This thanks was, for having me. This was so fun. It's my dream come true. This is the part where you would plug your social media, but you don't get any. You can find me on Real Life only. You can find me on Real Life. <laughs> I love it so much. Well, this was this was an excellent talk. Anna. Come get a haircut. Last last word though. Do you have any advice for anyone who's maybe struggling with? Staying off social media. Uh, well, I think with a lot of things, and I'm just assuming because I haven't really hit a hit a, a difficult point where I'm struggling myself. It's just I, like I said, I made a decision. I'm, you know, like I'm yeah. an all or nothing person. Um, so if I was to struggle, it would literally be simultaneously the end. I would be back on it. Right. There wouldn't, there wouldn't be a point at which I was struggling yeah because you're all or waffling nothing. about it i wouldn't waffle. right um right. um but chances are if you're waffling it's because something's missing in your life yeah. yeah so you're considering going back to it because there's nothing real to be there in its place i'm gonna leave you with one quick little story yes so scientists what? have done experiments with rats Ooh. um involving cocaine so cocaine as you know is, is a pretty addictive substance that makes people and it turns out rats feel good. So um, they have these, you know, experiments where rats are exposed to cocaine and rats will go and have the cocaine because there's no there's nothing else to stimulate them in their little cages. Uh... But as soon as they start adding enrichment elements to their cages, the rats became less interested in the cocaine and they were using the toys or eating the food or uh... whatever else the enrichment was. I can't remember what it That's was. It's a great analogy. But. I tend to think of that as, yeah, it's a great analogy for life. If if for some reason you're not getting any higher level of stimulation that's more meaningful to you, you're going to turn to the lower common denominator. Yeah. 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 You're going to go low when you should go high. And social media is such an instant one, too. It I is. think people are addicted to like the instant gratification of it. Yeah. And yeah. I think people might find, too, like you become more consistently enriched if you have to work for it a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Anything you have to work for a little bit more, you appreciate more. Oh my God, it's so. Yeah. And just, I just, wa I want to say too, like, no shade to anybody who has social media. No. It's, yeah, no shade at all. Yeah, it's completely something that you're entitled to do, and. Exactly, yeah. and I think like, like I, I'm probably not gonna deactivate, but I can also look at it and say, that might be you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, I can see the other side. Yeah. Where I can see how it would be useful for people. Um, and maybe if I was in depressive states for longer times than I get, um, maybe I would do it. But life is just too damn good right now. <laughs> you better work. That said, I don't want to hit a rock bottom either. So I think that that's important. Yeah. I think you know? basically what it's all about is just... Being present in your life and yes. considering where you are. Yeah. Keeping your eyes open and Yeah. Yeah. And maybe like finding happy mediums too. Like in other words, like that that comedian who posted the mountain picture, she still took a picture of the mountain. She didn't totally you know, she she had her phone with her to take the picture. She just didn't post it right away. Yeah. You know what, since I'm psychic, I should be called the happy medium. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> gonna start charging me yeah exactly to tell me that my love is close <laughs> she'll be like that'll be 50 bucks he's in the neighborhood <laughs> you know i will be actually i will get shells if that actually is the case okay i, I won't tell you i keep like say, yeah. this is like i can't get off the phone with my grandmother either. yeah um but anyway so i went to the psychic once and she said a bunch of like an hour's worth of crap <laughs> that was like uh, you know like just whatever crap was off the top of her head but she did say you're going you're going to meet a man named lloyd and I thought, that's really fucking specific oh wow didn't i meet a man named lloyd really did- only he was a 22 22 year old insipid prick who uh i couldn't wait to never see again did you have it like a situation with him though or yeah he oh, came okay. over the house and whatever things did, happen did she say that it would be a positive thing she didn't say but oh, okay. my assumption she, was if she was going to mention this person named lloyd that he would be of some greater value that's fair. not just a random hookup but like because she mentioned it i was expecting more out of it and probably gave it too much credence that's the thing about psychics right yeah i would love to have another psychic on i've had one psychic on and it was last year in december um, and I would like to have one on again, but what I want to do potentially, and tell me if you think this is a good idea, okay. I want to do, have me, I want to have two reunions done. One on me, who's kind of a believer in a weird way, but like with a grain of salt. Yeah. But then also have like a skeptic friend on as well uh, and I have would, them get a reading. I'd be your guy. <laughs> Are you skeptic? Yeah. Would you, would you, a load of crap. would you be... If I found someone who was like a reputable psychic who was apparently really good, and if I managed to get them to come on the show and record it, would you do, do a reading? Absolutely. Amazing. I'm very, very curious. I think that'd be fun. Mostly, like, psychics just end up crying whenever they do readings on me. And I'm like, what? that's not a good what? sign. That's not a good sign. Yeah, a lot what of them, you even a lot of them get emotional. Because I th- I don't think my future is really bright in the love department, according to psychics. Um, <laughs> well, you know how I feel about that. Podcast for another time. <laughs> actually, great. That. This will actually be perfect because this will come out right before Kristen's, which which I'm going to talk about that. Awesome. So that's a teaser into that one. Um, but thanks, thanks so much again for, for this was excellent. Thank you. And I don't even know how to end it off with you because I just want to keep talking forever. Well, we can just turn the mics off. We can just turn the mics off and keep talking. Goodbye, people. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. And Vern, do the honors and ring that bell. Multiple bells. Multiple. <laughs>